And good evening everybody. Hello and welcome. My name is Paul Grogan and tonight we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, you will see that I'm down in the bottom right. I'm very small tonight uh, because we're actually going to be playing a game on Tabletopia. Uh, the game that you're seeing, and I'll show, you the, uh, I'll show you the main board there, and I'll zoom out a bit. So this is Guards of Atlantis 2. Now, the original plan was that I was going to be sent a physical copy of this game. Uh, three of my friends were going to come round in about a week's time. We were going to spend the whole day playing the game, learning the game, practicing the game. And then we were going to do a live stream of us playing the game that evening. Of course, with what's going on in the world at the moment, that whole plan went out the window. But thankfully, the publisher still wanted me to cover the game. And with the wonders of modern technology, we're going to be doing almost exactly <laughs> what, what I'd actually planned to do. Uh, which is, four people are going to be playing through this game tonight. And I'm going to be teaching you how to play as we're going along. Thank you very much to everybody for joining in. I can see that the Twitch chat is working. The YouTube chat is not working. So I just need to click on a little button here. And then hopefully, there you go. That's working as well. So yeah, thank you very much to everybody for joining on YouTube and on Twitch. And to start with, I'm actually going to have a chat with Artie, who is the designer of the game and the publisher of the game. So hello, Artie. Hi, Paul. Now, no Hi, video everyone. from you. So I was going to get a still image of you and put it on screen and try and animate it while you were talking, but we ran out of time. <laughs> it's okay. They can so, look without my face. So, Guards of Atlantis 2. Tell us, give us a quick elevator pitch of the game. All right. So, um, Guards of Atlantis uh, strives to be a tabletop implementation of a popular uh, genre of computer games, which are MOBAs. If you haven't heard of the genre, it's the games like League of Legends, uh, Dota, etc. Um, basically, it takes what these games usually are and transforms it to a tabletop form, uh, striving to keep the relatively quick pace uh, and cut out all the unnecessary uh, overcomplications. Uh, and so what we have here is a game true to its original form, uh, which has entirely no luck. So uh, the game is based purely on card play and hidden information. So every success or mistake that you make, it's all on you. Yep. <laughs> now, Guards of Atlantis 1 came out in 2017. What's the main differences between the first edition and this one? Well, I mean, it was quite a few years since then. So yeah. I learned a few things and basically I used the my new skills to polish the game as, as best as I could. And we got pretty good uh, response to Guards of Planets 1. But I think after all the playtesting that we did, the game is uh, a year and a half in open testing right now. Yeah. Uh, we, I think, managed to polish uh, any rough edges which were in the original design. So mm -hmm. the game is uh, a bit more uh, forgiving to the new players than it used to be. Yep. But at the same time, uh, it became deeper. So characters are more involved. Um, there's mo even more interesting synergies uh, than there used to be. Yep. Um, there are mo more ways to win as well. Um, but you'll see, yep. you'll see it while the game is played. Yeah. So what people are seeing tonight, obviously you're seeing the Tabletopia implementation of the game what is it that people can see i mean obviously this is this is still a prototype but it, the artwork and the board and the cards that people are going to see there either final or close to final most of them i would say uh, from the cards that you're going to see 90 percent of final yeah uh, of course we're going to have as is common for a kickstarter game we're going to have plastic we're going to have cool miniatures but uh, i'm actually somewhat happy that we're playing on tabletop because we're not selling plastic i want you to see right. the gameplay and here you'll be able to see just that but uh, just so that you know the game also looks great yeah now so the game itself the game is finished is that right the game is not in development anymore or are you possibly still tweaking a couple of things um, yeah, that's a thing about me. It will be finished uh, when we send it to print because right, I, okay. I, I tend to use every second uh, yeah. to you know find a place I can improve. So yeah, uh, but I can stop at any point. I would say I mean if we have to send it tomorrow to printer, I will not be uh, hesitant. Yeah. Okay. Say. So yeah. So what people are seeing here is pretty much a finished version of the game. I don't think any major rules are going to change, but you might tweak or clarify a couple of the cards or the powers. 
Yes, it's. Uh, I think it was a year or so since we changed some major rule. At this point, uh, right. it's just balancing the characters, and there are twenty-two of them in the game. And, yeah, well, this is uh, one of the thing. <laughs> one of the things that I was going to ask you about. This is a team game. What we're going to be playing tonight is we're going to be playing a two versus two game. But how many players does this go up to? Oh, uh, it's uh, it's one of our sales pitches. Uh, so it actually you can play <laughs> That's it why with I'm ten. You. you can play it with ten. Uh, don't do it at home. Well, do it at home, <laughs> outside, but only if all the ten players played it before. Yeah. Uh, not because the game will take too long, but just I mean, explaining game to ten people, regardless yeah. which game it is, would take more time. But yeah. Um, because most of the game, like the important parts, happen simultaneously, as you will see soon enough, uh, it kind of scales really well. Uh, with more players and the minimum number of players is four uh, yes so it's it's a team versus team game at its core so there yeah. you go and you will see as we start playing why you can't really play it one versus one with controlling two characters on your side because there is limited limited communication between the two sides in order to reduce analysis prices in the game so that that is quite a key part of the game but you'll see that as we go along um now the other thing is tonight we are going to be playing through a full game okay now when the game is released and when you get the game for the first time it can be a little bit overwhelming with the, with all of the different choices that you can have in the game so the suggested method for your first game is to play an introductory game which is shorter uh, and slightly less complex because you don't unlock the higher tier of cards where the abilities get very powerful um, so we're not going to be doing that tonight. We're going to be playing through a full game, so we are going to give you the full experience. But as I say, when you, if you do, if you are interested in this game and you do get this game, I would strongly recommend playing the introductory game first uh, to learn how your your character works. Now, what's the future for this game? You're going on Kickstarter with it, is that right? Uh, yeah, we're launching Kickstarter on 28th of April, so right. not long to wait. Not long to wait, but yeah, so that's in 20 days time. We're going live now on the 8th of April. Um, obviously, there's a few people watching live now. I imagine there will be quite a few more people watching once the Kickstarter launches because they want to see the game being played. So hello to everybody who is watching this in 20 days time. Right. Um, I think that's it. I'm now going to basically give a very quick high level overview. We are going to be explaining most of the rules as we go along, but I just wanted to explain very briefly to everybody who doesn't know anything about this game. We're playing the two versus two game. So this is me. I am Brogan the Destroyer. Since my surname is Grogan, it makes sense that I, I play this character. Uh, and this is me on the board here. I'm represented by this figure here. Uh, and my teammate, uh, Ryan, is going to be playing Arian. We'll say hello to Ryan in a minute, but he's going to be joining me. Uh, and we're going to be fighting against Tiger Claw the Cut Purse and Wasp the War Maiden. Now, these are the two enemy characters. These are us two. We're on the blue team. The other team is the red team. And what we have in the middle of the board is we have these minions. Now, there are blue ones and there are red ones. The blue ones are on our side, the red ones are on the other side. And you'll see, if you look closely, that there's three different types. I'll come onto the minions in a bit more detail later on. But what I'm now going to do is I'm going to explain to you how you win the game. First of all, all of these minions here in this zone, whenever... Uh, all of the minions of an opposing team are removed. Basically, that team pushes and goes into one zone closer to the enemy throne. So, for example, if all of the blue ones disappear in here, then immediately the game is interrupted and the red team pushes into this zone here. And then all of the minions reappear, which is what all of these icons are here. And then we carry on playing. If the red team manage to get another push when they're in this zone here, they win the game. So that is an immediate victory if you manage to push effectively twice from the centre into the enemy throne zone, then, then you win automatically. The other way of winning is these life tokens here. So you'll see that there are these life tokens for the red team and life tokens uh, for the blue team. They're actually called in the rulebook at the moment, respawn tokens. And what happens when a, when a, when a hero dies, a number of these respawn tokens will be flipped over based on the tier of the character when it dies. Now, we start off the game, we're tier one characters. So if I die right now, uh, we would flip over one of these. And if you ever flip over all of them, then your team loses straight away. 
if when you die, you flip over these respawn tokens and you've got some left, you will then respawn on your next turn and you carry on fighting. So they are the two ways that you can win the game. The game is played in a series of rounds and in each round, there are four turns and you will see that there are four turns because each player board has four turns. And you will also see that I have I have got five cards in my hand. These are my five cards. So I've got a gold one, uh, a red one, a silver one, a green one, and a blue one. In fact, all characters at the start of the game have five cards in hand. One gold, one red, one gr uh, silver, one green, and one blue. And all of the gold ones do a similar type of thing. All of the red ones are kind of attacky. Well, the red and the gold ones are attacky. Um, the green and the blue ones are special, and the silver ones special as well. But they're all similar in what they do thematically, but they're all unique. They are all different. And what's gonna happen is in each turn of the game, we are all gonna select a card from our hand, put it face down on the table. The cards will then be revealed, and then we will resolve the actions on those cards. I'll explain it more as we go into it. After four turns, we basically do a little bit of tidying up. We get all of our cards back. We check, the minions basically fight each other at the end of each round. So for example, if there were four blue ones left and only two red ones left then the blue ones would kill two of the red ones and that can trigger a push immediately in the end of round and characters are also going to be collecting coins characters will level up and when you level up you get to take cards from your deck again it's not it's not shuffled or random or anything else like that you get to choose cards from your deck to basically replace cards in your hand so your characters will level up as the game goes on and because you always choose which card to take, this is simulating the fact that in a lot of these computer games, you get builds of characters. So that each time you play it, even if you play the same character, you can experiment with, with different builds. Now, Artie said earlier on that they've actually got 22 characters for this game. So we're only playing four of them tonight. Um, you are going to see these four characters. But from my limited knowledge of the game, having played it this afternoon, the characters play very differently but also a combination of characters will play very differently. So Brogan and Arian together would play very differently, I think, to Brogan and Wasp, for example. So replayability value, although the board is fixed, it's the same board every time, the replayability value is going to come with the actual characters. Right, that's enough, I think, for a very, very high level overview of the game. I'm now going to welcome uh, Ryan. If you want to say hello, Ryan, and I will try and find you on here. Yeah, hello. Uh, is this Ryan? No, nope, yep, that's is not Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, no, no, I'm no. trying to find. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find which Skype ID I added you on, um, and you are. No one wait. Yeah, the problem is everybody Skype. If your Skype ID Ryan was Ryan, I'd be able to find you easily enough. There you are. Ryan is now on screen. Okay. So. Yeah. So Ryan, you're going to be playing Arian with me. Yes. How many times have you played this character? Uh. It's really tough to tell because, like, um, all the other playtesters that we have in this game, too, have been playing for, like, a year and a half. So yeah. <laughs> we've bounced around, like, all the different characters. I've probably played him at least ten times, uh, wow. but that's multiple iterations of him, too. So, yeah. like, don't, don't let that... <laughs> it's actually sometimes a burden to be a playtester because it's cards have changed and modified. So it's, it's, uh, we'll, we'll see how I do with them. But yeah. Yeah. So I know how you feel about that. So, as, uh, yeah, just make sure you look at your cards beforehand. In case, yeah. <laughs> in case Artie's changed any of them. Uh, yeah, right, exactly. so our opponents are uh, Raz and Dez. Say hello. Hey there. There you go. Now, the characters that you're going to be playing, who's playing Wasp? I am going to play Wasp. Right, okay. And then Tiger Claw the Cut Purse. So I've actually played this game once. We played it this afternoon with these four characters. Uh, so I have a little bit of an idea about how your characters work um, because knowing what the other characters can do is, is quite important in the game. You've got to kind of know what the other characters can do in order to be able to you know, play against that. But I think, to be honest, if, if you get this game and you think, oh my God, it's going to be overwhelming, I'm going to have to learn everything. I think your first game, just sit down with some friends and just play it. Just 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 play your first game, play the introductory game. Don't spend, an, don't spend hours looking through all of the other cards to see what they can do. Play your first game and it'll be a surprise. And then you play your second game knowing, oh yeah, I know what he can do. I know what I can do. And you'll sort of, you know, unlock the mysteries of the game the more you play it. Right, is there anything any of you wanted to add before we start playing? Was there anything I missed in a, in a high-level overview? 
No. Cool. Well, I think you did a good job. There is, there is one thing Des, I have. We can't, we can't hear you, Des. D yeah, Des has got his microphone Des. muted. Okay, Des has got his microphone you. muted. Possibly. There we go, oh, sorry. There we go, right. right. There is one thing I missed. Uh, I forgot to yes. mention these wave tokens. So, every time there is a push, we remove one of these wave tokens. Okay, because otherwise the game could go on forever with just pushing backwards and forwards. Now that won't happen for other reasons, but every time there is a push, one of these wave tokens gets removed. Once the last wave token is removed, it is the team that won that push that wins the game. Nice. So it could be that, you know, you're, you're right in the middle of enemy territory and you think, oh yeah, we've got this, we just need to get there. But if they, if they then manage to push it back to the middle, they would win because they did the last push of the game. So that is the other timer. So one way or the other, the game, the game is going to draw to a close. Right. Uh, I think that's everything. So just one final message to those people who are watching and in the chat is because I'm going to be playing Tabletopia on full screen, I am not going to be able to see the messages in the chat. Um, Artie, hopefully, is going to be uh, in the chat and taking care of any of the comments there. But feel free to chat amongst yourselves about what's going on. And we're now going to make a start. Good luck, everybody. I say good luck in a game with no luck. <laughs> um, and let's let's see how we get on. So the first thing is we've all got our five cards in hand. Uh, I'm hoping none of you are actually watching the stream, because if any of you are watching the stream, <laughs> you're going to see what cards I pick. Now, in terms of communication between teammates, the teammates are allowed to communicate with each other about what they're planning to do before the cards are played. As soon as the cards have been played, once they've been revealed, the team cannot then discuss strategy uh, or what they're going to do. And that that is in there because otherwise you might get an alpha gamer who basically tells the other player what to do. And it can also introduce a lot of downtime as the team sit there for five minutes, you know, trying to work out the best thing to do. So no communication between teammates uh, once the cards have been revealed, but before they get revealed, absolutely fine. So, uh, um, Ryan, is there anything you want to say to me? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think for the start, uh, I think depending on who goes first, I don't know what card you're going to drop. I'm going to try and stay relatively close to you, but the, the standard one round thing is get a minion if you can. Uh, yeah. Both of us coordinate like which minions we're getting. Mm -hmm. and uh not die that's kind of like through the whole not thing, die but okay i'm gonna write that one really good. <laughs> i'm gonna write that down here There's step plan. one uh i'm just gonna follow your lead i think this time there you go. so i'll right. try not to go last all right so step one don't die i've written it down there you go uh <laughs> that's more for me that's a reminder there you go now bear in mind i've only played this game once so i'm playing against three expert players that have been playing this game <laughs> a lot for the last 18 months so i'm going to be making some very silly mistakes probably but let's see what's happening okay i'm going to play that card there so what we do is we all play our cards face down on the table and once they're all face down we reveal them all and now if you look at the cards there is a number in the top left that is the initiative value of the card so mine is nine uh arians is four uh, wasps is 10 and tiger claws is also two now you can get modifiers to initiative that we'll come to later on but basically the higher initiative goes first so we have 10 which is the highest one so what's going to happen is i oh uh yeah i'm gonna use my card to move yeah so if i'm just going to show so... your card on screen there you go so you can right. see the card on screen we've done the initiative value there's a few things you can do with the card. You can use the card just to move. If you do that, the only thing that matters is this boot icon and the number in it, okay? I'll explain the rest later on, but you're gonna use it to move, which means you can move three spaces. Now, when you move, you have two options. You can either move three hexes on the board and you move from one hex to an adjacent hex and you can't move into these obstacles, or you can use all of the movement value of the card which could be anything from one to a million, to do something called fast travel. Now, when you fast travel, you can move to either any space in the zone that you are in, as long as there is no enemy piece there, or any space at all in an adjacent zone, as long as there is no enemy there. So I assume you're gonna fast travel. 
I am going to fast travel through the go. jungle right now. Yeah. So literally any space whatsoever in that zone. Now, if there was a, an enemy minion there, for example, this one, which could never be there, but if there was, you wouldn't be able to do that. Okay. There can't be yep. any enemy piece in the zone that you either leave or enter. Okay. And that is it. That, that is how quick a turn can go. That card is then placed. If you look here, he says on the player board, it will go into the turn one spot. And the rules are of, of the game, when you're playing the game properly, is that you can kind of do a move and then think, oh no, wait a minute, now I'll, I'll, I'll change where I move to, but as soon as you have put the card on your player board, that's it. That's like taking your finger off the piece in chess. It's locked in at that point. Right, next highest initiative is me. Uh, and again, I am also going to be using my card to move and I'm gonna fast travel and I'm gonna go here. Okay, and that card goes onto there. Uh, next, we have uh, Arian with initiative value four. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing and move right about. I'm thinking here. Yeah, this is a fairly standard opening for the game is that characters are going to be moving around, but you'll see all of the other stuff on the cards uh, as we move on. Uh, okay, and then finally, Des. Fast travel to here. Oops, to here. Okay, so you've, you've, you've played a slightly different card to the rest of us, but again, you're just using it for movement. Right, that is the end of the first turn of the game. So we now move on to turn two, where again, we all just select a card from our hand. Now, the thing is, I, I know, and this is where the interesting part of the game comes in. Um, because Raz, I know that you know what cards I've got in my hand. Yeah. So I think you know what I might be doing and therefore you can yeah. kind of plan against that. Uh, yeah. So therefore I need to be aware of the fact that you know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> you can see how this is going. <laughs> there are some mind games with this with this game. So, let's have a think what I'm gonna do. Okay, I have chosen a card. I got to see it doesn't choose my two. Okay, here we go. The other thing that was said in the in the game that we played this afternoon, uh, and I think it was Des that said it, is because I'm relatively new to the game, I might actually do something very cool, very interesting and really good because none of you expected it because I just picked a random card because I couldn't work out what to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. So just be aware of, of that. Right, we are now revealing our cards. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. So let's look at the initiative values. We have a nine, we have a one, we have a five, and we have an eight. If two of the initiative values are the same, something happens. I'll explain that when it does happen, because it, it will happen eventually. But we have initiative value nine. What are you going to do with the static barrier card? Uh, I'm going to use the static barrier, uh, its ability, so the skill yeah. will be triggered. So if you look at this card here, which I'm showing on screen, there is no movement value on this card. So this card cannot be used to move. So what, it, what he's doing is he's actually playing it as the actual effect of the card itself. Now, this is a skill card with an area. So what happens is it actually gets played onto the player board that you can see here sideways. And what that means is this is set up. Uh, this, this effect has been generated and that effect will last for this turn. Some of them actually last for a round but this one lasts yep. for this turn. Uh, so enemy units in radius, and the radius is two, may not move out of radius, and enemy units outside of the radius may not move into the radius. So Wasp, who is here, has a static barrier around a range of two. Is it a her? Yeah, it's a her, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, right. Uh, next initiative is eight. Now this is a red card, so this is an attack card. Um, but again, I'm going to use this one for movement. Okay, and so it's I three think... movement. Good. I'll look around here real quick. Um... The red cards are very powerful. They they are the attack cards that you're going to be using a lot in the game, but they also generally contain quite a lot of movement. Okay. So what and I... also usually have the highest defense rating. And the highest defense yep. rating as well. Okay, cool. Yep. Yep. Okay, right. Next is me on five. Now, I did have a plan. 
And I think I might stick to that plan still. Um, yeah, which means I am actually going to play this card here. So this is a shield card. Uh, and I'm not going to play it for movement because there's a static barrier around Wasp, but I was actually going to play it as the skill. So again, this card is rotated sideways and goes here. So what this card does, this is set up a skill. It's an area of effect which lasts for the whole round. And if a friendly, friendly melee minion within radius of me would be defeated, I can protect it by discarding cards from my hand. So quick note about the minions, because this says a friendly melee minion. You'll notice we have some different types of minions here. We have three different types of minions. We have the melee ones. I'm going to show you the red ones. So that's a melee one. We have a ranged one, which is there. And we have these big super special ones. Now, the super special ones, uh, I'll explain them first. They are basically immune to everything until they are the only one left on the board. Um, yeah, right. That's enough about the minions for now. And that is my go done. And we now have um, Tiger Claw. Okay, I activate Tiger Claw's Shadow Warrior skill. That makes him immune to everything next turn. So next turn, you are immune. You can move through units and units can move through you. Okay, so we need to be aware of that. And now we are going on to turn three. Okay, and the the shield that you set up, that static barrier, that's no longer in effect, is it? Exactly. Nice. I could just put the cards like this. Oh. Yeah. But also, so, it's, since it's last turn, well, usually here's the thing. Find... Yeah, that's fine. Here's the thing that I learned from playing this afternoon against um, against a couple of play very good players. Um, I should be looking at their play board and I, could, I should be looking and saying, right, Wasp. Wasp has played the green card, played the silver card. Therefore, I know it's got the red card left, the gold card uh, and the blue card. Um, and you can sort of try and you, you've got to really know what color cards uh, again. Your hand will always be five cards at the start of the turn, and it will always contain one of each of those colours. So I need to be aware that there is a gold card still left, and a gold card is generally a high initiative card. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I think I'm going to do that. Right, so we've all played a card, and now we reveal. All right. All righty. So mm -hmm. we've got Initiative 10, Initiative 3, 9, and 7. So Initiative 10 goes first, Spell Shield. Okay. And so just some reasoning for playing this. It does have a good skill, and I'm going to pop it, but I wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily sure it was going to fire. I was kind of doing that because I wanted to wait. It was, I was doing it more as a hold action to see what our enemy did because the right. Tiger Claw has a lot of movement and he's immune. I didn't know where he was going to go, so that was kind of my reasoning for doing that. Okay. So what you've done is you've spell, set up Spell Shield, which means... You and friendly units in radius of three are immune to enemy skills and effects. You're right. Tiger Claw from the previous game runs around the board stealing people's money and backstabbing them. So we're safe from that this turn. Right. Next initiative is nine. Okay. I'm going to use my attack to move for five. One, yep. two, three, four. Um, five movement. Five. It's huge, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Okay. Incoming. Um, yeah. <laughs> You'll notice if you're, if you're looking at my cards, for those people looking at the chart, thinking, well, wait a minute, Paul, you don't have a five movement card. And it's, yeah, you're right. Brogan the Destroyer is a bit big and he's a bit clumsy. Um, so I'm doing my mad dash. Now, I could use this as an attack, but I have to move two spaces in a straight line before I attack. Oh, look. There's a character there. Now, uh, this is Wasp. Wasp is not immune. I've not missed anything, have I? No. No, I, don't think I, so. I haven't. Excellent. Right. So it's going to work. Now, normally, your attack cards, you would need to be adjacent to your enemy when you resolve the card. Thankfully, Brogan has this special attack where I can move two spaces in a straight line. In fact, I must. I cannot attack anything next to me. So I'm going to move two spaces in a straight line. And now we are going to have our first attack. So the way that combat works is this card has an attack value of six if I, there were any of my uh, melee minions adjacent they would basically give me an extra boost of one and i believe if there was any of my ranged minions within two i would also get a boost of one but there aren't any so my attack value is 
6. The defense value of Wasp is equal to a card that they can play from their hand. You will have noticed when I was showing you the cards, each one of them has a shield value on. That shield value is only relevant if you play in defense when you are attacked. So do you have a defense card of six? And if you do, you don't have to play it. Oh, I do have one. Okay, so let's have a look wow, at the card. I didn't think she was that tanky. <laughs> so it's this, you're uh, playing this I shock card. I just want to mention that uh, the minions will only affect defense, so they're not affecting attack. So it's oh, right, thank you. I got that wrong. Thing. Yeah. So... It's kind of, yeah, you're right. It's kind of similar though. Whether it takes one off your defense or it adds one to my attack, mm -hmm. it's it, mathematically it's the same result, but you're right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's just thank the positioning of the minion that will change. Yeah. So, for example, if this guy was here, that's the range minion. Yeah. Then my defense would be down uh, by one. Well, or or your defense because he's my my guy. Oh yeah, yeah. Would be minus one. Minus one. Uh, okay, so it modifies the defense rather than adding to the attack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so you've discarded so I defend shock. with my red. Yeah. Uh, still alive. That's good. Yeah. Now the good <laughs> thing with that is I know that red card is now gone. <laughs> so that's yep. that's really good to know. If you weren't able to defend, or you didn't want to defend, that would be a kill. Uh, the character would be returned back to their throne, and one of the uh, respawn tokens would be flipped over, because all characters are currently tier 1. And then I would have got some gold. But that didn't happen, but we will see later on. Right, so that's me done. I'm happy with that. I actually did something. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Uh, right, we'll, who's... Uh, take back Raz. So if you want to take that hit, just for demonstration, I'll, I'll take the kill. Like, <laughs> I, I need the assistance right now. <laughs> oh, you use that method when teaching games as well. Kill. Yeah, I thought about it. But just then... for the purposes of the demo, would you mind just uh, destroying your own forces just so we can show what happens? Yeah, I've, mm -hmm. I've been there. Right, the final card to play. No. <laughs> I'm joking. No, don't you don't have to. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the final card My to be played turn. is Magnetic so... Pull. Yeah, it's, it's getting hot in here, so I'm... I'm thinking, I'm thinking of just getting away. Okay. Now you so could, you could I can fast still travel. fast yeah. travel in the zone and even here if I yeah. want. Or I could move around you, but that would put me in a kind of a picky, like in a pickle. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking, yeah, I think I'm safe though if I stay here. So I will try to stay aggressive a, a little bit. Okay. Right. That is the end of round three. So round four. Now, I know you've only got your gold card left. Yep. If only I could remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so, a little insider information. I think you're okay. Wasp's, uh, wasp gold is just uh, uh, melee attack. Yeah, that's what I thought. Right. We all played our cards? Yep. And it's reveal. Weird. So we have initiative of 13 first. Yep. Yep. Link strike. I jump so, over this guy and kill him. So here we go. Blink strike is an attack of two, but before you do the attack, you have to move to a space directly behind the adjacent target beforehand. So what's happened is Tiger Claw has jumped over the minion and any attack against the minion kills it. Even if the attack is actually zero. So that is it. Now, whenever a minion dies, the player who killed that minion gets two gold. Now, the gold supply is here. We haven't really covered this, these coins yet, but you get two for killing it, which is what you've taken there. Excellent. Right, now we have a tie on initiative because we have Wasp on 11 and we have Brogan on 11 as well. So at this point in the game, we look to this initiative token here. Now, this presumably was tossed at the start of the game to a random side yep. and it's indicating red so that means the red team win the initiative for this particular action and then this is flipped over so wasp you get to do your dazzling dagger uh, yeah what i'm gonna do is just i'm gonna stay put and that's one thing you have to know about the cards mm -hmm. like you you all you can always resolve your cards without using any ability on a card so just yeah. doing nothing is always a valid option okay so this is what i'm going to use right now right so you just put Actually the card there yep. yeah 
So I have this, which is a basic melee attack, but there is nothing next to me. So I'm actually going to use this card for a movement of one. And I'm going to move to there. Okay, that's <laughs> that card done. Uh, I'm just being friendly. This group. <laughs> Real nice, though. <laughs> you're going for the kills. That's like what we've been doing for the past like year and a half. So you're excellent, doing excellent. Fine with the playtesters. All right, uh, so with my last move, I'm going to actually move right here. Okay, and oh, there we go. Okay. So what we now have is we have the end of the first round of the game. So what we do, we all take our cards back into our hand. And if we had any in our discard pile, uh, that goes back to your hand as well. And now all characters, well, then we do the minion battle. So here's what's happening in the minion battle. The red team have one more minion in this zone than the blue team, which means the blue team lose one of the minions automatically because they're outnumbered. Uh, is it your choice as a team which one goes? Yeah. Uh, no, it's actually ours. So we get to make this strategic decision. Well, of which, I, I will which let you make that strategic decision, fight. Ryan. Okay, so... Um, I'm, I'm just going to make another note. If we lose the game, it's Ryan's fault because of the minion that he chose on... Right, done. Oh, there you go. 100%. <laughs> However we lose this game, it's going to be my fault. It's, it's totally fine. Um, I'm thinking, my immediate thought is because um, Des is going over here. Yeah. Uh, Tiger Claw has a lot of mobility to kill these minions. Tiger Claw really likes going here. And Des is the only one who got a minion kill. I want to kill one of these ones, so he right. at least has to practice some cardio to kill another minion. Yep. <laughs> okay. Are you and again, fat? <laughs> <laughs> and again, if that go a little bit, <laughs> if that caused the loss of our last minion in that area, a push would have happened immediately. But it hasn't. The minions are still fighting each other. Right now, we look at whether characters can level up or not. So, if we look at my player board, you will see here these are the character levels and the coin cost. To increase your level so i would need one coin to increase my level i don't have a coin so what happens is i get compensation we called it a pity coin this afternoon i don't know technically what the game term is but it's, it's compensation for not being able to level up so uh, i take one rem takes one and the wasp takes one however tiger claw has two gold and leveling up is not optional you must do it so the cost to level up from level one to level two is one coin so you spend one coin. Why you would ever want yes. not to level up, I don't know, but it is mandatory. So what happens when you level up is, ah, these cards have been all sorted out. That's a really good idea. What you do is you take any one of your tier two cards and the tier is in the top right here and you choose whether you want a blue one, a green one or a red one. And that goes into your hand and it replaces your existing card of the same colour. The other thing that you get is the card that you did not select. If you have a look at the bottom, you will see that this is a potion of dexterity, which gives you plus one initiative. So the card that you do not take is flipped over and slid under the top of your player board. I'll just show you my player board here. You'll see that there are slots here to incre increase the attack, defence, initiative and other things. So the other card becomes a piece of equipment. And this is the build of your character. Every time you level up and you get a new card, you actually get two cards. One of them is a new card for your hand and the other one is a piece of equipment. So what have you chosen? You've chosen... So you've now got a potion of dexterity, which means all of your cards are now one initiative higher. And the card that you've added into your hand is pickpocket, which I have been on the receiving end of earlier on today. So I know how bad that is. Tiger Claw basically runs around the board stealing coins from the other characters. Or from his teammates, by the way. Not no, now. That got changed. It's got really? changed. Oh, yep. Yeah, that's my, I, I was heartbroken oh. about it. So. <laughs> so I think if you were... Uh, letters of complaint sent to Artie. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, Artie will be hearing about a strongly worded letter from all of us playtesters. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> well, he's got his reasons. So for those people not familiar with the Tabletopia interface, you will you may have just noticed that the, all of the minions suddenly changed. And it's because if you rotate the camera like that, you actually see a top-down view where you can slightly more easily see which side the, the, the things are on. But if you angle it that way, you get to see that view of it as well. So that's why suddenly the screen is changing. Right, we've done the minion battle. We've done the leveling up. We are on round two. Off we go. Now let's just right. have a look at the situation here. Okay. Yes, you need my help, right? No, he's fine. Uh, 
I don't know because I think we're kind of delaying their farming a bit, which really suits yeah. me. Um, I'm just gonna try not to die. Rogan is big. Uh, okay. <laughs> so what, what they're saying is this is all part of their cunning plan to trick us. Right. Um, okay, I'm gonna try something, Paul. Nearby. Say again. It's gonna be. I'm, I'm gonna try something, Paul. I think it's gonna be cool, but I don't want to spoil it. So we'll okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to have a look at the possibilities that I've got because I think. Okay, I'm going to try it. Oh, but if it doesn't work. If That's actually the sub caption of guards. It's guards two. If it doesn't work. Don't if it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> um... Or guards two. I've made a huge mistake. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got a plan. Right, there is the card that Famous I'm playing. Words. <laughs> okay, reveal. So we have initiative values of 10, uh, 11, 5, and 1. So the 11 goes first. So, Arian, you're doing Noble Blade. Yep. So the way Noble Blade works is um, before I attack a minion, and this is a very important keyword to pick up in guards, I may move another unit adjacent to the target one space away. And I actually am going to do that. So before I kill this guy, who's the only guy in range of me, I want yeah. to pick this guy up, and I'm actually going to move him here and then kill this guy for two. Right. So, there are a couple uh, positives and negatives to me moving here, like we talked <laughs> yeah. about. This guy is giving you a minus one defense, but you're also getting a plus one from this guy, so they cancel out. Yeah. And I know Brogan is on the tankier side. Uh, yeah. Another thing that this does is um, you cannot move through, uh, unless a card specifically says, you can't move through units yeah. or like heroes, minions or whatever. So I'm actually closing off a route of escape for Wasp. So that's yeah. why I decided to do that. Well nice played, play. champion. Yeah, yeah, nicely done. Right, so the next <laughs> initiative is uh, 10, Attract Fire. All right. Uh, what's really nice about my green is it's fast, but also I can move. Uh, I have movement of three. So I'm gonna yeah. try to delay my death okay. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so you went one, two, three. Yep. Yeah. Right. And at okay. the same time, try to be aggressive towards minions because we're kind of winning this push at the moment. So you've played your green card, which means you've got that and that left. Uh, so. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to play this for movement. And... Now then. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go here. Or do I want to go there? I think I'm going to go there. I've given up chasing Wasp around. <laughs> Okay, nice. right. And then the last card is Shadow Warrior, which is the one that basically means you are immune next turn. Yep, yep. And now we go to turn two. So... Razzy, you still okay over there? Yeah, I'm fine. I have <laughs> oh, this okay. little thingy that allows me to be safe for a turn, which I might use or might not use. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Mm. Who knows what's going to happen here? Uh, well, let me try. Yeah, sure. Do I? No, I won't. Mm. Decisions, decisions. It's funny, when we played the game this afternoon, as soon as we finished the game, I thought I was going to be completely lost tonight, especially playing against you guys, but. I'm not saying I'm going to play very well, but I actually feel like I know partially what I'm doing, so I, I can be blamed for any mistakes I'm making. That's good. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's I, great. I think that's the game... Great. I mean, Artie said earlier on, he said there's four complexity levels to this game. The first level is complex, and then it's very <laughs> complex, and then it's stupidly complex, and then it's mind-blowingly mm -hmm. complex. Um, I think the rules of this game, the core rules are relatively simple, but it's, it's how you play your character and the way that you know, you actually make the choices within the game. Uh, that's yeah. where the complexity comes in. So, 
Let's flip our cards. Okay, so we have 13. Okay. Oh, I've forgotten that was your card. Oh, I can do two. Ah. All right. Uh, and then I am going to pop my spell shield action. Yeah. Uh, just as a repetition, I know I did it last round. You and yep. friendly units and radius are immune to enemy skills and effect tokens. So radius. Yep, nice. Uh, so what did you do, Tiger Claw? You you killed one of them. Nope, I just moved. Did you? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so then it's static barrier on nine for wasp. Oh. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> nice call, Ryan. Yeah, yeah, was that was no, that I thought, radius I on it. spell I knew... shield buffed recently? I... Paul and I mind melded. I felt yeah. that last turn. I knew what he was going to play. <laughs> what, you mean my, oh, I'm going to leave you alone and walk away. You didn't fall for that then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to make a third note on here. So the first one was don't die. Second one is blame Ryan if we lose. And the third one is learn to bluff. There you go. <laughs> learn to bluff. Well, you don't want to bluff your teammates though. No, that's true. Right. All right. Okay. So I will not. I will not use my static barrier because. Oh, you're not using it. It's pointless. Uh, I mean, I could trigger it. Like spell shield does not prevent me from tr from triggering the spell shield, but it prevents you from being affected by it. So there's no point. Oh from... right. Okay. So, hang on. So the spell shield. Ah. Right. So the spell shield yeah. protects me from the static barrier. Exactly. Mm. Right. Okay. Yeah, so I can I can do what I want. Right yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So it's me. So I can do yep. what I was planning to do, and I can move two. And attack for seven. Yeah. Is that, uh, so history repeating. Yeah. So I'm attacking for seven. Your defense is at minus one because of my. True. Is it? Oh, you're right. Oh no. <laughs> I smell blood. Oh, it's mine. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. I will choose not to discard a card. Right. So we have our first kill. Any card I'm going to discard is pointless, and so I'm going to die. There you go. So what happens is we get to flip one of these respawn tokens over. So I have to unlock it first, and then flip it over. And remember, as soon as they lose all of them, that's it. Game over immediately. Yep. First kill. I'm Good job. going to get my one assist coin here. I was going to say, first kill should definitely get an ice cream. I'm looking around for my ice cream. I haven't got you any. You do get oh. one, go one gold. Uh, oh, that's true. I get, so I get one coin from that. And the reason I get one coin is because I have killed a uh, level one character. Was it a level yeah. one character? Yes, it yeah, was a level yeah, one yeah, character. Yeah, he has no cards. Okay. Level and then... A uh, quick way to do level is uh, look at the number of cards under yeah. a board and then add one. Add so one. like Dez is level two right now. Yeah. So the player who did the killing blow gets a number of coins equal to the level of the character that they killed, and all of their teammates get a number of coins equal to the tier of the character. Now we haven't really, we've mentioned tiers, but we've not gone into them in much detail. Uh, I'll mention it more later on, but right now we're still all tier one characters. Right. So oh, we are on that, turn that's three. That's demoralizing. What am I going to do now? I'm just going to point out the whole, I'm fine thing. <laughs> well, he's spell Rest shielded. just doesn't want to be a burden. He's just very spell nice. Spell shield like, had radius two farmed. before, right? Mm -hmm. I think I still would have been okay. Like, as long as Brogan's in the radius, he's fine. If it was radius two. I mean, yeah, you, it, you... Checks when, it, checks the, it checks at the beginning of his action. So he was in radius when he started moving. So it was okay either yeah. way. Now, you could have defended against that, couldn't you? You did have a card. So I, the, the, I was using a little bit of knowledge there. You attacked him once, and he discarded his red when he was getting no defense buff. Um, so when he was there, and I figured you were using your red, I think that he was one shy at that point. Because you hit him with the charge yeah. first with no defense modifiers, and he was able to block it exactly with six. This was the one point you needed to get that. Ah, uh, right. Okay. So he didn't, have, he didn't have a a seven in hand. It was a six. Right. Yeah. Nice. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of these cards and I'm going to move them out of the way. All right. Okay, so we're flipping. No, nope, uh, we're not flipping. We, well, we, I we, have we, 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 
and jump the gun there. Getting too excited. Yeah. <laughs> Smell blood. Right. Rogan's bloodthirsty. You're, you're just playing your character. Right? That's it. I'm role playing. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Still off we go. Broken. So we have initiatives of two, three, four, and nine. Oh, I'm going first. Um, in fact, yours isn't two, is it? It's three because you've got plus one initiative. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So it's me first, and I'm using the cards to move two, and I'm going here. Done. Okay. Um, uh, next up is Arian. Arian, yep. So, um, I'm just going to switch over to the chat while you're thinking, if I can switch over yeah. to the chat. No, Tabletopy is not letting me alt tab. Okay, so I'm going to do the my skill here. I didn't do this last time. I just used it okay. for a So this is place your hero into a space in range with no spawn point and not ad adjacent to an empty space with a spawn point. So these are empty spawn points because we've killed or moved those minions. Yep. Um, so I can move three as long as I'm not on or next to a space like that. So what I'm going to do is move um, right here. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wonder why. <laughs> Hmm. Oh. I'm going to try and get the chat up on my iPad, which I will put over there. All right. Uh, me and Des are tied right now, so we need to decide. Yeah, I'd like you to go first. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just gonna stay here. Mm. Right. So mm. I can just about see the chat messages. If anybody wanted to uh, to send me any tactical advice. <laughs> in the chat <laughs> i can just about see it uh right where were we up to by the way uh paul this is something that's very different from guards one like okay. i just died last turn and i can just pop in into the fray right away and this yeah. is something that uh i think was a bit uh criticized uh from guards one like there was a huge downtime before you could respawn right just instant. in guard one it was that you had to wait till the beginning of the next round to the second oh, turn wow. and you had to discard your red card as well right. okay so, so yeah so what's happened yeah. is um wasp died which means on wasps next turn they basically when it is their turn to act they put their figure back on any of the spaces and take their turn immediately and what you did is a fast movement and you're you're back almost where you left off exactly okay and, and then the biggest we... threat has been yeah well, it's, it's spent already so. yeah and then what did um what did Tiger Claw do? Just move? Just move to here. Just After move to everyone there. ran away and didn't want to give me so money. No one wanted their gold taken, instead. so... <laughs> it's, all get, it's all getting a bit friendly here, isn't it? Did anybody bring a picnic? <laughs> okay, so... Uh, I'm totally choosing that card. We've all got cards. we flip flipped them over. So, 11 for me. Uh, 8 for Arian. Eight over there, so we're going to have a tie break in a minute, and nine plus one for ten. So it's me first. So I have a basic melee attack. It does four attack damage, but it's, it's irrelevant because I'm attacking a minion. So the minion is removed, and I get two lovely coins. There we go. Right, so next we have... Uh... Well, one more thing happens. Uh, so uh, with your card, after you defeat a minion, oh, and this is another cool thing I about forgot Rogan... That. Yeah. He doesn't have a lot of movement on his cards, but he does have some cool reposition options. Extra so movement, So once you yeah. defeat a target, uh, you move into the space that uh, the target that you've yeah. killed. If you and it's, it's a must. I can't choose yeah. to do it. If you could choose to do it, yeah. it would include the word may. So yeah, so Perfect. I have to yeah. move onto that space there. Okay, no. next we have initiative 10. Remember, it's Speaking plus one of because of the with... equipment. Yep. Speaking of attacks with built-in movement, <laughs> yeah. Tiger Claw takes this guy. Yeah, and then can, he may move one and. Is it may? No, it's not may. Okay. It's it's not an optional movement that. Okay, Actually, so we yeah. have. We have a tie on initiative again. We have eight and eight, but this time it's the blue team that win the initiative. So Arian takes. So yeah. Their turn. I kill this guy. I'm not super happy we tied there, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then it's um, Des. Raz. Uh, Sorry, yeah, Raz with Wasp. Turn. Yeah. Kind of. Hmm. 
Yeah, Scott's saying in the chat that we're not practicing social distancing. We should be staying two hexes apart. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah especially Brogan should do that. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go here. I mean, that's four movement, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, reds are reds are interesting because they're oh. like I mean all the cards are conditionally good, but reds yeah. are, are some really good stat cards. Like I mean yeah. they're really good defense. They're oftentimes your best movement option. So you have to really be careful when you play them. Kind of. Yeah. It's 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 uh they're they're very versatile, but once you lose it, you lose a lot of options. Yeah, yeah. you want to avoid to defend with them. So the first first round when you attacked me and I had to defend with the red was actually yeah. like a big a big bummer. Good, because I was thinking about it and I was thinking. Because, you, because you've got five cards and you only play four cards during the round, the fact that I made you discard a card, I, I wasn't sure of the impact that that had. But if you're saying it, it did have a big impact, then that's good. Yeah, well, you prevented me from being able to reposition uh, with yeah. my red because four movement is, is very fast. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Right, so that is the end of the second round. So again, we get all of our cards back. We check the minions. Now, let's see what the situation is in the middle of the board. I believe it's tied. It is. Yeah, so yeah. basically the minions just squabble amongst themselves, but none of them actually die. And then we all level up. Now, if you guys just want to do your leveling up yourselves, I will talk people through mine. So the first all thing right. I do is I spend one coin, which I'm just going to put over here, uh, and I basically level up to level two. So what I do, now these cards haven't been sorted out, but I'm going to sort them out. So that's a three, that's a three. Uh, that's a two. That's a two. Uh, that's a three. Three, two, two, three, three. And then my four. I wasn't going to mention the four, but there it is. There's a sneaky preview of a level four uh, card. Right, okay. So here's the situation. I choose um, red, blue or green. Uh, and remember, I'm going to get both of the cards, but one of them is going to go become a piece of equipment. Uh, and the other one is going to become an actual card that I want to put in my deck. So I'm just looking on the board and I think I'm going to take... Uh, I'm going to take that one. I think so, you just yeah. leveled twice or... Actually, no, twice, right? I'm, I'm I will. Three times, man. I, I, uh, ah. I times, man. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, excuse me for a second. <laughs> so that card goes into my hand. Oh, that's going to be scary really fast. I get rid of that one, and this one becomes a piece of equipment. Uh, and what kind of equipment is it? It's a sort of striking, so that gives me plus one attack. So that's going to slot in under my... Let's just move my coins here. That's going to slot in under my attack section. There you go. Um... Yeah, so that's me leveled up the first time, but then I still have three coins. So I will level up again by spending another two coins, mm. and I level up again. So at this point, I select another of the two colours, and this time I'm going to select green. This game and suddenly got very scary. Yeah, Arian. I'm going right. to take... Ooh. I see what you did there, Ryan. Don't, will you worry about your own stuff? Don't look at what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take this card into my hand and get rid of that one. Uh, and then that becomes a piece of equipment, which is plus one attack again. So there you go. So I've obviously gone with a, a, a big attack build. My attack is now plus two. <laughs> we can see... Uh, how do you call that in English? Uh... A pattern here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I guess Paul and I. <laughs> so right, here's the about, thing. Don't worry about these items. These are just to help us kill minions. That's yeah. It. Here's the thing that I learned a little bit from the first game is that because I thought my character had quite a lot of attack, there wasn't actually much point in me boosting my attack. However, once you guys start getting defense bonuses, so that's it. It basically it's a preemptive strike. I'm increasing my attack bonuses. Because I know at some point you're going to increase your defensive bonus. That's my thinking anyway. Right, so I've leveled up. I'm level three. And you can see that because I have two cards. So it's the number of cards that you have plus one. Uh, oh, Arian, you're level four. 
Uh, yeah, I uh, I made bank that last round. So I got the assist kill from you, and I got two minions. Uh, right, And I okay. had my pity coin from the previous round, so I was able to catch up a little bit that round. Okay, okay so now we can talk about tiers of characters. Okay, now, at the start of the game, we were all level one. We were also always, we were all tier one. As soon as right, you have got, guys. as soon as you have got all of your level two cards, which you now have, Arian, you become a tier yep. two hero. Okay, now what that means is, is a couple of things. Um, obviously, you are now worth four gold for the person who kills you because you're level four. The other mm -hmm. players on that team will get two gold because that's your tier. But the biggest difference is if Arian now dies, we lose two of these respawn tokens and not one. So basically, as the game uh, goes on, the game escalates, the characters get more powerful, but they are also more renowned tokens will get flipped over as they die. Um, yeah, so we have a tier two character on this side of the board. On the other side of the board, what do we have? We have a level two wasp and a level three tiger claw. Okay. All right, Des. Yep. Um, yes. I think we should try to use our movement and our fastness just to farm, to out farm them. Um, I went, uh, this is not like a huge secret, but I went for ranged attack. So maybe we could try to do that. Ryan went for ranged as well, though. So, all right, let's be mm. careful. So um, we're going to have a push at some point, aren't we, in the middle? Uh, yeah. So right, yeah, right now um, it seems since we're even, uh, it each. might be kind of a race to to get a push in one lo yeah. one location or the other. So, uh, right, I agree. Let's do. Let's do this. Let's yeah, do this. It. If you think you're good, I might try and go like get get over to this side and and get a get a minion kill, and uh, maybe hopefully prevent them from getting one. But that's kind of a secondary objective. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I played red in the game this afternoon, so I keep looking at the blue minions on the board and thinking of attacking them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, that's a perfect charge to kill our own guy. I was gonna say I'm I'm gonna get this one. I'm go and then I went. Yeah. Oh wait a minute, I'm blue. Um, the fuck. Rest assured, this is a mistake that's happening with even with RD these days. Right. So, fun no fact: I told Paul about that earlier during the teaching game, and he didn't believe me. And they did it in that game right away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are some mistakes that we make after a year and a half of playing, where I'm like, "Did we have we played this game?" Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now you think we uh, know who our minions are at this point? <laughs> now, Artie can jump into the conversation here. Is the actual game going to come with coloured snap bases that you can put onto the characters so you can clearly see which side you're on? Yep. There you go. Right. So it's it's only a problem for us playing on Tabletopia right now is that everything has a white base. But the actual board game, it's going to be a lot clearer as to as to what you can... Uh, yeah, as to which side everything's on. Right. Okay. I need to select my card, don't I? Uh, where am I? What's going on? And other stuff. Oh wow, yeah. I, uh, okay. If you don't have another strat, Paul, are you cool if I hint at maybe something that you absolutely can do? You don't have to do it? Absolutely. So um, there's a lot of good things about fast travel in this game, and mm -hmm. when you first read the rules, uh, the biggest thing is it's like, oh, it helps me get into the action quicker. Like you saw at the start, it kind of got us to the mid tier. Yep. But it's also good at repositioning uh, to get minion kills. So yep. Brogan is super slow. He's, I mean, that's yep. one of his big things. Um, but there might be a way to, for you to get this minion pretty mm -hmm. quick, quick if no one blocks you. I mean, we look, we see an enemy team down here, and you're over here. So, I mean, me saying that, it's all open table talk. Someone might try yeah, to yeah, block yeah. you, but there are some things you can do. Like, if I go for this minion, yeah. and you can get this one, we might actually have a significant shot at yeah. pushing. So what we're saying is I would, I would move three to here, and then on my next turn, I would fast travel to here. That yeah. kind of thing. Right, I think yeah. we're faster than that, aren't we? And you guys are you guys didn't hear that, right? You guys yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't I, I can't get much more than this guy uh this round. But if something wrong happens turn... Can you can you get both of them? I can definitely get both of these without problems. Should be a turn three. Alright. Uh yeah, I should get the super on turn three. Alright, I'm I'm okay. all I'm open to be uh, versatile this round. Okay. Right. right. Cards have been selected and we're flipping over. Now, just to remind me, who's got what initiative bonuses? Uh, Both so of you two? Initiative boost. 
So uh, I think you're the only one, Paul, who hasn't got plus one initiative right okay, now. Okay, right. So we have a three here then. We have a net 11 there. We have a five there and we have a five here. So it is Wasp first with Attract Fire. All right, let me look at this. Might have a problem, uh, but I can't talk more than that. Nope. <laughs> we'll try to go here. So fast travel to there. Um, so both of us are on five. Now, if two people on the same team are on five, we choose which one of us goes first. But remember, the cards have been revealed, so we're not actually allowed to discuss strategy at this point. We can just stare at each other, Ryan, and try and wink. Mm -hmm. to... <laughs> but I'll, I'll go with um, I'll go with your choice on who you want, who you think should go first. Okay. Um, I think. If it matters. I think I'm going to go first. And okay. I might pivot a little bit. Um, so I think I'm going to go... So I got my teleport again. Yeah. So it's it's a slightly here. better teleport, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Like, I'm still going under range. I mean, it's range four. I wanted to keep it uh, versatile, but I'm uh -huh. actually just teleporting right here. Yeah. Uh, right. So then it's me. And here's something that I didn't use in the previous game. I could use this as a skill... And a friendly hero within range 4 can retrieve a non-attack card in their previous turn slot. Which is this. So I could, if I wanted to, and I'm not allowed to discuss it with you at this point, I guess. Um, I could activate so I the... point out a quick rules thing. Um, yep. Right now, this is the current turn. So you would have to play this turn 2 for me to retrieve oh, this. Yeah. It does say in their previous turn slot. Thank you. Right. In which case, yeah, yeah. I'll, use, I'll use it as 2 movement. Now, where am I going to move? Uh, I think I'm going to move to here. Okay. Yeah. Aw. Might be the wrong thing to do, but I'm going to do that. It right. Wasn't, it wasn't bad. It wasn't. Oh no! Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Oh. Hang on a minute. I've just noticed what card you've played. <laughs> 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 oh no, that's fine because I haven't got any. Oh, I have. I do have one money. Right. You've played your pickpocket card, which means you could. Uh, move up to two spaces and two coins from an adjacent enemy hero and move that number of spaces in a straight line. Okay, so you basically run up to somebody, steal their coins, and then run away. Um, I can't actually... No, that's fine. Yep, that's absolutely fine. That's where I'm going to go. Yep. So. That was a pretty good move because if you had stayed somewhere else, I could have robbed, robbed you and then run away so I can position to take this minion. Now yeah. I'm forced to only position to take the minion. Yeah. But you're still stealing the coin off me? Nope. You're not? I need two movement to get down there, so I can't, and I only get one movement from the coin, so I have to do it that way. Oh, I see. It's, it's move a number of spaces away equal to the coins that you took. Yep. Right. Okay. Nice. Gotcha. Okay. To reference, Paul, when someone points out something like that, you just confidently say, yeah, that's why I did that. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, totally. 100% why I moved there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been reading my uh, How to Bluff while, uh, while, while we've been waiting for my turn. <laughs> okay, so, um, turn two. Now then. Now then, now then. Oh, wait, if he does that. Yeah, if he does that, and that does that. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting things that could happen here right now. I yeah. don't know. I don't know what Des is going to do. <laughs> Nobody knows what Des is going to do. Des doesn't know what he's going to do. <laughs> no. Yeah, I just put him on a pile and then hit random. <laughs> My experience with the game is whatever the most annoying thing Tiger Claw can do, that's what he's probably going to do. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Right, let's also, flip our cards. I mean, for, if there's League players watching, I used to be a Teemo main, so they know how I like to play. So I think I'm first at 12, right? Uh, 12 yep, yep. is the first one, yeah. So it's your Noble Blade. Okay. So, uh, before the attack, you may move another unit adjacent uh, one space. So I'm going to... Uh, well, I'm not going to get... I'm not really worried about that because I think you have a block. I'm going to move this guy one. Yep. Um, and then I'm going to hit Dez for six. So why is it six? And we'll see what... Well, uh, because I have two attack. Uh, right. So it's I, six I and Dez's defense is down by... One Nothing because now. of this? Nothing. I moved the minion. Uh, oh, that's a melee minion. Because I didn't want him to kill it. Uh, right, okay. Mm -hmm. So, Des, you're facing an attack of six. 
when you get to see yeah, which green card he has now. And Tiger Claw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now, so here, here's the thing. Leave, leave that card there for a minute. Tiger Claw has yeah. this, this defense card in hand, which has basically got infinite defense. It, it blocks the attack. So, it, it, you know, it didn't happen. Uh, so, yeah, Tiger Claw has basically one card in hand which protects them against any one attack. And you can retrieve a discarded attack card if you had one. There you go. And the card that you use to block, uh, to, to, yeah, goes to the discard pile. Right. Uh, who's next? We have, that's a net 10. That's a net 10. So it's between you two who goes next. Um... I think it's okay. Um, actually, you go first, your okay. my move will depend on yours a bit. Yeah, well, my, I think mine's pretty pretty obvious. I'm gonna slap Arian for four. So you're attacking with this card. It's three normally, but you've got a plus one attack, so you're being attacked for four. A little rude, but I'm going to defend with this, which so is you're I defending think with this card, which is four defense. Second defense skill. Yeah. So it's it's four, um, but because uh, there are, this is kind of similar to the card does played in that I get a specific uh, benefit from playing it as a defense card. Right. Okay. So if if I'm adjacent to no more than one enemy unit, which I am, I gain one coin and I gain plus two defense. So it's actually a six. Right. You get nice. the coin either way. Yeah. And after my I, I may move one before um, I may move one after the attack, so I'm going to go here. Yep. Okay. Uh, right, so. Raz, you're up with your charged boomerang. Um, you know, change of plans. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go here. <laughs> okay. He's in here. He's in here. Awesome. Ouch. Right. Well, should I join the party? <laughs> I think I might. Um, yeah, so I'm going to play this card as move two, and we're going to go here. There you go. We're all together. We're all friends here. <laughs> Paul? Yeah? Like, seriously, <laughs> thumbs up for that. That was... <laughs> so, oh, I, I, well, I, so with the webcam, right I just... I realized with the webcam, it's so hard to keep a poker face, because when we mm. played just on voice chat, <laughs> I'm, like, screaming internally, but that was awesome. That was perfect. Yeah, that was a really good cool. play. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, there was a group hug going on and I was, you know, feeling a bit lonely, so... Yeah, you you protected me from one attack by doing that, because right. Tiger Claw's Blink Strike, uh, you have to, yeah. he has to, it's mandatory, leap over a person, yeah. and so you blocked him from killing me. He can yeah, Artie was finger. doing that the last time we played, is he kept moving into a position yeah. to block that Blink attack. And again, that's what I was saying earlier on about, you get to know what the characters can do, and therefore you can manoeuvre yourself in order to stop them being able to do the thing that they're going to do. Right. Um, so, I think I can be fully open about this. I don't think we're on, yeah, we're on turn three. Turn three okay. of turn round three. three, I believe. So, yeah, uh, turn three. So, I still, I only got two cards left, so I'm in a little bit of a yeah. down spot, because if on turn four, I'm going to have nothing to block. So I might have to be a little defensive this round and anticipate maybe getting hit by something. Yeah. So we'll 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 see how that goes. Yeah. And then um, everyone picks up their cards because I said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a hard call. This is a hard call to make oh, for so me. Yeah, Paul, I think whatever happens in these next two turns, I think you're probably going to do some more work than I am because okay, that's my fine. options are limited. And that's the thing, you were able to defend against that attack, but and losing that card has really reduced your options for the rest of the round. Correct. Yeah. Raz, do so, you think, I mean, oh. Raz, do you think Ryan is trying to mind game us? Yeah, absolutely, always. <laughs> you think he's going to go for red? He, you think he's pretending to go to defensive and then hit red instead? I mean, this card keeps changing, I don't know what it Well, is. the thing is, if, if he's attacking... It's the same card! Uh, he cannot land his red if he's playing red. He won't be able to. So, wait. What? Yeah, so I think you're safe. He can't land his red because... You did see that your gold only interrupts skills now? Uh, yeah, but he's gonna die if he plays red right now. 
that's that's my point. I think you're he's saying. worth a lot of gold. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. He's worth much gold. So I can probably even if he try threatens to kill me, it's worth dying to him. Okay, right. So we have Wasp is going first on twelve. Yeah, and I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna attack. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> While he's thinking um, what Paul did earlier to block the attack here, a lot of guards is based on countering what other people are intending to do. Mm -hmm. and that's a really, really good skill to develop really early while playing it. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's In fact, the thing. just touching to on that. Area. Oh, no, go on. OK, rude, but oh. I'll, I'll allow it. OK, yeah, very nice. So what, was, what did you do? Um, uh, I can. I, I, Raz, do you want to go through the? the oh yeah, attack? I just attacked him. Yeah. So that's three damage. Uh, uh, he doesn't have any shields. He is not adjacent to any minions. Yeah. And uh, since my my attack is a dazzling dagger, yeah, cannot use his skill card. Yeah. So because you turn. went first, it basically the skill card that you were going to do, is is nullified. Yeah, I fizzled his spell shield. Because you you've dazzled him with your daggers. Yeah. yeah, but it's an attack of three as well. Yeah, and so I force him to discard his red, and now he doesn't have any cards left in hand. Right, and this is the thing. We're going to go into round four. Uh, sorry, we're going to go into turn four, and Arian doesn't have any cards in hand, so Arian effectively skips the last turn of that round, but didn't die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, so next, <laughs> next is me. Exactly. And I have an attack of four, which I am totally using... So I'm hitting Wasp for four. Yep, and I'm going to die. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two kills. <laughs> and so now awesome. we're learning how sometimes Brogan's card is... <laughs> there you go. That so awesome. So that goes there. Now, what level were you? You were two. I'm level two, yeah. So I get two coins, and my teammate gets okay. one. I get and I one. get to flip one of our respawn tokens. I'd uh, love to see yeah. what the guards play. The chat is thinking right now. <laughs> there you go right so basically okay. it's just Brogan and me left uh, yeah I can't play oh, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna salute Brogan <laughs> in an honor <laughs> oh, th there's more to come <laughs> let's flip this so I can oh, wait I still happens. have cards I still have cards yeah uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, okay. Oh, there it is so oh, it's uh, blink strike on 14 why Killing Wasp, or actually, I think Wasp actually let herself get killed as well. Absolutely. Right. You know, because um, my you card. Had to move to spot, I, and I had so to you clean up the spot behind nice. Arian that I need to blink strike him, and which I do that's now. That's what you're going to do. That's an attack. Bye bye, baby. And that's a kill. So, what you've just seen is possibly, I mean, I was all celebrating my victory. It could have actually been part of a master plan because the end result is my attack card meant that I had to move onto the space where I defeated uh, Wasp, which left the space open for the Blink Strike. And you're right, Ariane is worth four gold. Yeah, because... and as a good, and as a good guards player, it's, it was all planned. That was all part <laughs> of yeah. 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 it. Was yeah, no, fair, fair dues, fair dues. Um, I was right. even on the plane. <laughs> well, I actually gave up three gold and one token, so we could get six gold and two tokens. It was a really good play. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're, now we're evened out on respawns. And yeah. Stuff, so we lost, like... we lost two respawn tokens because you're a tier two character. Right. Uh, okay. Exactly. When Artie was talking about complexity levels, that's complexity three. It's strategically dying. Yes. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's okay. <a> play. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna move two because I have to. But now I am going to kill... I'm killing the right colour, aren't I? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay, so that's gone, and I get two coins for that. And then that card has gone there. And then the final card of the round is... Magnetic Pull, which I assume you're using to move? Yeah, so the drawback of all the scheme is that you will have advantage of exactly. the push. Exactly, yeah. That's not a drawback. You knew that you, you put yourself <laughs> in a position where we can lose the push now and you can absolutely instantly exploit it. All right. Land. Okay, so end of round three. Let's take our cards back. 
And I'm getting my pity gold again because I didn't. And now, it. if you guys want to do your leveling up while I talk through what's happening in the middle of the board. So what we have here is we have uh, three blue minions and two red minions. So the minions are fighting each other at the end of each round. We have three, they have two, which means one of the minions, one of the red minions is removed. If it was three versus one, well, sorry, if it was four versus two, two of the minions would be removed. It's basically, it's the difference between the two. So we're removing one minion. And if you remember what I said at the start, this big one can't be removed until it's the last one. So basically, this one goes. Now, what that means is as soon as this one goes, that's the push. The push happens immediately. Right, and then we level up. Now, I am currently level three. Uh, which means it's going to cost me three coins to get to level four. So I don't have a choice. I have to do it. I spend my three coins and I get my remaining tier two card, which is either this one or this one. Now, last time I played, I took this one and then regretted it. So I'm going to take this one instead. And that's going to go... So I lose my old red card. And then this one becomes a piece of equipment which adds one to my defense. And we're gonna tuck that underneath my board there. Uh, I don't have enough coins to level up, so that's my leveling up done. So I am now a tier two character. I'm a level four tier two character. Arian is still a level four tier two character. Uh, you took your compensation pity gold? Yes, I did. Okay, and meanwhile, over the other side of the board, we have Tiger Claw is also now tier two. Uh, Wasp is still tier one level three. Okay. All part of the strategy. Oh yeah, all part of the strategy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, and I think we're going into the next round. So, uh, okay. Now, the other thing as well is this big minion here. These are worth four gold when you kill them, not just two. So, right, so are you planning to stay there? Or are you going to maybe tr maneuver to kill this guy? Uh, I think I can actually prevent uh Brogan from getting the kill. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah. Paul, mm -hmm. you're in a position to kill the minion. I'm gonna leave it up to you. Um, well, I sometimes, am. sometimes so I, okay. But I just got some radio talk coming in from the other the other team that said they might be able to prevent it. Uh I'm trying to think about what Wasp can do to do that. And again this comes down to like do I remember all of her cards correctly? Yeah. I, I like, because she's so far away from you, turn one, I'm trying to, I'm racking my brain, because we know that her dome is radius two, which obviously wouldn't prevent you from That will not prevent it. Um, hmm. uh, what did she grab? Oh, okay. I know, I know what it is. Okay, right, what is so, it? So, yeah, uh, she might have gone for a green card that's range four, which lets her uh, teleport a, a unit in range four, up to range four to yeah. an adjacent spot. To her a lot of times that's a good offensive option to use it on an enemy to, to get him away from a weaker yeah, yeah, teammate yeah. uh because they have no more minions this minion was immune to like everything and in, in combat it's, until it's not now but now it's not it's now it can be targeted by skills attacks on both sides right so Raz can grab this minion before you can act because he has two initiative and it's green so i think it's a 10 so he's operating at 12 which uh and then he's just going to pull it uh, right. Like, are we, uh, no, we uh, going to confuse Ryan even more now by pointing out that Raz didn't level up his green? He didn't. Oh, I was looking at your board. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're confusing me more. Uh, All right. right. I, okay. I like this. Ignore that okay. five-minute rant that I just went on. No, no, no. But that was absolutely Hashtag perfect. Mind game. Yeah, yeah, because because what you've just discussed, I think, is exactly the kind of discussions that go on in this game once you've played it a few times. That kind of tactical analysis of the board, the cards, the situation. I'm really glad you did that for the purposes of the people watching because it shows That's what <laughs> it shows the depth of the choices available in the game. The fact that it was all moot, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah we'll ignore that part. <laughs> okay, yeah, but, but so are they mind gaming me into me thinking that there isn't any, there is something they can do when there actually isn't? I'm frequently wrong, um, but uh, uh, one, two, three. The only thing they could do is if you, if you popped your red mm -hmm. and Tiger Claw was fine parting with his red, which is a higher initiative than yours. He could just get, move in front of you and block you. Get in the charge. way. Okay. Uh, I, I, Wasp may be able to do the same thing with her red as well. So I think it would have to be a movement block. I don't think it would be anything else. Right. So, so that's that's. Uh, okay. I'm just going to try and get closer to you. That's my plan. Yeah. Uh, it's up to you. 
how <laughs> I have made a decision. They're going to do. I have made a decision. I'm going to live by it. Right, we're flipping. Flip. Yep. Okay, so initiatives. We have a 13, which is actually a 14, which is the blink strike. But you can't use that to attack. Nice. Now, what's happening now, and you should always do this when you're playing, is take a minute, have a look at what all of the cards played are, because then you can work out what the other players are likely to do on their turn. So definitely when you play this yourselves, as soon as the cards are revealed, don't just rush ahead and do stuff. Have a look at what the other cards are and try and work out what the other players could do. Right. So you can't do the blink strike, so you're just using it to move two. Exactly. Okay, right. Uh, next we have uh, the charged boomerang, because you're on initiative 11, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. You're plus two. So I have to think about this. This is a really cool card, because it cannot... I mean, it's, it's, it's very thematic. It can't attack units that are in a straight line. <laughs> so it's got range of three, but only at wonky angles. So while Raz thinks, Paul, you yep. um, asked earlier why the level ups are mandatory in guards. Yes, it is actually a tactical reason because you could st sit on tier one and gather gold until you hit like tier two, and then you also instantly get a huge boost in strength. Oh, right. Okay. Without risking, uh, without um, losing tokens on the way there. Of course. Yes. Thank you. The other thing that was mentioned in the chat which I'm just going to, I'm going to mention it here, is people were asking about, about the cards. Um, mm -hmm. And RT is basically saying that, yeah, every card is unique and every card has unique artwork. Mm -hmm. Correct. Now, yeah. as somebody who works full time in the, in the industry, I know how much artwork costs on cards. So I think it's, it's really good. I mean, I love cards with unique artwork um, mm -hmm. and I, I like the artwork in this game. So yeah, it's good that they've, you know, they're putting, putting a lot of money into this. Mm -hmm. It's also not the same artwork as Guards 1. Right, okay. They've not just recycled it. Cool. Okay, so... I think I'm just gonna... Mm. It's it's very tricky with Rogan. Mm. I'm wishing I had to play my red card now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so that's the thing sometimes, right? Is it's like he knows he's going faster I than know. you, so as soon as he sees he doesn't play your red card, it like the threat of him moving in front of you was enough to get you to not play it. So yeah. now he can kind of do whatever he wants. Yeah. Which is, I mean, it, it feels bad when it happens to you, but it feels great when you do it to someone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it also allows you to like reposition and then try the red next turn or on turn four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because you're going last, it gives you a lot of. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's really good to go last in a round because you get to see where everyone's moved. Sometimes there's the perfect position for you to be in. Yeah. Um, which is why you'll actually notice that like high any characters like Des, he has no. None of us can be the thirteen on our cards. He's yeah. Like, Tiger Claw is one of the fastest characters in the game. Yeah. His blue is actually slower. Is the our slow? Yeah, cards. exactly. Yeah, which is is a huge thing to point out. Like. Sometimes it's really good for Tiger Claw to go last. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I really there. wish I really wish right now that I was playing after you, but you know, this is the okay. build I went for, so yeah, I'm gonna cope so, with it. I'm going to move um, to move here. I'm gonna fast travel. So I guess um, when Raz did this, I don't know that we went through it a whole lot, but so in guards, when you die, you essentially just chill out at your base, yeah. just eating snacks or whatever, until you choose to resolve a card for any action on it. Um, so like I'm choosing to fast travel, so that's an action. So as soon as I do that, I pop up on the board in any one of these three spaces, and then I can fast travel. Yep. Until I do that, I'm chilling out here. So like you can't get you can't camps. be attacked. Yeah, exactly. Like like if if Raz had been chilling out here when Des killed me that last round, I don't just pop here and immediately die again. So yep. it's that's kind of a safety mechanism against. That. Yeah, so I think if I remember correctly, it's also one of the only ways that where you can, um ways that you can choose not to play a card is while you're waiting on respawn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, well, I'm just going to use this to move to. Or choose not to resolve a card. I think you still have to play a card. You just choose not to resolve it for anything. Okay. Right. Oh, uh, now I realize that I could have done something very nice. I could have walked into the jungle to prevent area. Prevent from the coming. fast travel. I'm so yep. happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. I was so right. focused on trying to save the big guy. But, uh... yep. Okay. Turn two. Hmm. Yeah. Um, 
All right. We got two attacks down, Paul, so we're actually in an okay spot. Um, one thing that I'll point out, if we do want to push this, if it moves into their pre-thrown zone, uh, they start out with one minion more than us. Yeah. So if we kill this minion and then it pushes, uh, and we don't do anything to stabilize this, we immediately start two minions down, like yes. on, on the first minion combat. Yep. The fact that they're two attacks down means that it's it might be a valid strategy for us to kill this guy. You get the four gold, uh, mm -hmm. and then I maybe move up and try and stabilize the push. Yep. So it doesn't always work out that way. A lot of the times you don't want to kill this guy to avoid that first minion combat, because yep. it would happen down here. But here that might not be the worst thing to happen. So uh, I'll... I'll leave it up to you what you want to do, and I'm yeah. gonna just try and try and pivot uh, based on what you do. Basically, he's saying if something goes wrong, it's your fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fine. I like, to, <laughs> I like to free myself up of any responsibility. Yeah, no, that's fine. Right. Okay. So let's slip. Uh, right. So we have initiative. That's twelve because of your two initiative bonuses. So that's ahead of me. We have a ten there. We have a five there, and we have me on eleven. So yeah, this one goes first. And uh, what do you want to do with that one, Raz? Um, like I can't use the skill right now because there's no ranged attack. No, so no. I'm probably gonna retreat, but I want to try to prevent Arian from teleporting. So range four. You can't really go into the fray with this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move here. Okay. And if I'd have played my red card, you wouldn't have done that. But if you'd played your red no. card, something else would have happened. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. I, I might have made a mistake, but yeah. Okay, so um, I am going to kill the minion. I'm going to do it. So it is yeah. an attack on that one, so the big one's dead. So what's going to happen is I get four gold, and then we immediately do the push. So what happens is the other guys are moving the minions around. Basically, they all come back, and they fill all of the spots on the board, and we remove one of these uh, wave tokens. Now, you will notice, and Ryan mentioned this earlier on, in the zone nearest the red throne, there is uh, one fewer space of the blue ones than the red ones. So basically, the red ones have an instant advantage in that zone and the same in this zone as well. Um, so yeah, so we're already one down, which means if we don't kill any more minions by the end of this round, the red minions are going to win that fight. Uh, and that's a nice balancing mechanism because otherwise you'd be able to rush in there and you'd you know, you might be able to get the enemy thrown. It's quite difficult to, to get over that. Right, what other cards have we got to play? That's my card done. So we have uh, a 10 over here. Again, because uh, you yep. killed that heavy, uh, you move into its spot again. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that. Thank you. It's all, it's all good. Right, so we have initiative 10 for Tiger Claw. With your super attack card. Yep. I um yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. Let's go here. Okay. Okay. That should be the right spot. Uh so hard. and then finally Arian. And again, mind meld, Paul is yep. great. Uh I couldn't teleport in here before because uh there were a bunch of empty minion spawn points, but, but because now you pushed can. it, I can spawn right here. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Right, turn three. Let's have a look at the board and see what's going on. So, Raz, uh, you go farm. Okay. Oh, well, take a minion. <laughs> I'm going to try and be a nuisance a bit. Yeah. Uh, so even though Dez is down both attack cards, Paul, Yeah. Uh, he has uh, at least one card that's faster than you. Yeah. So he might also... He, he, right now, he might be playing mind games on when you're going to play your red. Yeah. And if he plays his blue on that turn, or not blue, sorry, green, uh, he's just going to move in front of you. Whichever yeah. one's uh, faster. I think it's I think it's green. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which yeah. is rude. We're all That's good. Um, regarding this farming, Des? Yeah. 
not gonna happen. Are you afraid of problem? Uh, <laughs> yep. 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 Another uh, another great thing that I want to point out uh, about you being down here, Paul, once that minion wave pushed, um, it would be pretty good for them to be able to fast travel and position yeah. around our minions. But yeah. Because you're here, they you're blocking them. So as long yeah. as you want to stay in there, that's that's cool with me. Yeah. Until until they have no other choice but to move in here the slow way. Um, I'm just gonna say, don't worry about the red. All right. Even though that's pretty obvious then, but I think it's um, what I'm gonna do. I think it's the best call to make right now. Okay. Right. I'm gonna trust you on this, Des. I'm scared. And we flip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what initiatives have we got? We've got a 13 over there. No, nope, 12 over there and a 12 down here. So initiative is with the red team. So red team get to go and then we flip the initiative token. So it's uh, Tiger Claw first. Okay. What a surprise. He didn't take red now. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to do... Mm, hard call. No, actually it's pretty easy. Um, Ras should be safe now, so I can do this. I hope. It's a risky play. Oh my god. What's happening? <laughs> I, okay, this is where I'm completely lost. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is a super advanced strategy that we don't understand. He's yeah. obviously got but some kind of cutting He's going to go in our base and he's just going to start taking all our stuff. That's his plan. That's, that's, that's not even in the game, is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, right. I think I'm next at 12, right? You are next so I'm 12 with your Noble Blade. To, all right, let me make sure that I'm not messing you up somewhere. Okay, so what I'm going to do is move this guy here, because uh, yep. I have to reposition, and then kill this guy. Yep, so you get two gold. And that has evened up the minions in that area for now. Uh, and then we have me on five? No. Because you, you're We're plus tired, two initiative. You go first. We're tied, yeah, but I so go first. Oh, oh okay. I, made a bad, I made a bad mistake. I'm so sorry. I'm going to try and work out where that bad mistake was. Um, Actually, I feel safer now that he's playing first. One, two, three, four. Oh. You're not within range four. So I am just going to move. use this for two movement. And I'm going to move... Hmm... Well, I was going to go there, but I don't think I am now. I think... Let's just have a look at this. This is... Are they called what? silent and tense everyone is right now? Yeah. yeah. I'm putting my Wasp hand over played my that, that, <laughs> that, the that, that. So therefore, oh. there's that. Oh, this is... This is tricky. Um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna go there. That's my two movement. Okay. Let's just have a look at the, yeah, okay. You didn't want us to have any mercy with you, right? Sure. Okay. So, uh, Wasp for the last card of this turn. You know what? I am... Um... Gonna do this. Use it for movement. Better. Well, wait. Oh. <laughs> Did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> this is the best part of guards. It like moves at a really steady pace, and then there's just one turn <laughs> where it's <laughs> like, oh, it goes, nowhere. No one thinks it goes that. It's gonna go the way it does, and then everyone's just like crouched over their table or computer you can monitor. Do that. You can do that. Ah. Uh... I'm gonna go here and hope for the best. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Alright. So Turn four. Paul, I Paul think... by the way, didn't profit on my misplay. So Yay. Yeah, so yeah, well um, 
can what could I have done, now, Ryan? So he's, it's kind of a profit. <laughs> um, yeah. So there, there are and a number of things. Been a free kill otherwise. Yeah. So, so does one of the one of the valid strategies would have been um, you could have killed does that round, which is I mean, could I? yeah. So he his his he, the only card he has left with the defense is blue, and it's slower than you, and it's also not enough of defense. I mean, you got two attack items. Yeah. He, but like you would have just slammed into him and then and then killed him. Yep. You would have been out of position for the push, but you would also have been the only one in this zone to fast travel everywhere. But how could um, I have attacked him last turn? Um, oh no, you set up. You could have set up for this 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 next oh, right. turn coming. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, right now, uh, what I think is going to happen. Um, I mean, Wasp guarantees kills this, and then we're down a minion again. Mm -hmm. So we're in a little bit of a bad spot, but I think I think we can still maintain the offensive here because we're only a minion down. We're going to yeah. be two down by the end of the round. So I think yeah. uh, if you want to block this for a little bit longer, so yeah. Tiger Claw doesn't really get the, you know, the he doesn't just get to fast travel back in here. Uh, I'm happy to do that. Good. All right. Okay. So we have initiative uh, 13, Dazzling Dagger is first. Let's just have a look at the other cards. Okay, right. So yeah, yeah Wasp is first on 13. Okay. For gold, something yep. I didn't have much in this game. <laughs> right. Um, hey. You're up next, Arian. Yep. Move here. Are you just using it for movement? Uh, nothing was in range for me. Yeah. Wasp, Wasp put, went where she needed to. I was trying to bait her by getting like two minions right here. Right. So I could shoot that spot. Obviously, she... Raz didn't take me up on it. So nothing is in range for me, so I'm just going to use it for three movement and move there. You could also fast travel, by the way. Uh, Not saying that's the right call. Oh yeah, I, I could, couldn't I? I could fast travel to anywhere on anywhere in this section. Um, do I want to, or am I happy with that? Um, That is a very good question. Okay, yeah, I think I will. Thank you. I'm going to fast travel to uh, there. Right, okay. Uh, and then finally we have the pickpocket, which I guess is just two, two movement. Mm-hmm. How do I do with that? No, I have to be fast. Got to go fast. <laughs> Move to right. So, end of the round. We get our cards back. And then the minions fight and basically the blue team have an advantage. No, so the blue team are down by one. So the blue team lose one. So which one do we want to lose? Um, I don't want to lose this one. This is the only okay. one I don't want to lose because he's 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 uh, helping me out here. Um, right. It well, gives lose me a lot this more one. options with that plus. Yeah, that's perfect. We'll perfect lose that one. Lose. There you go. Right. Uh, leveling up. Oh, yes. So I'm currently level four. So one, two, three, four. So it's going to cost me four gold to go up. So I am spending four gold. And I get my first of my tier three cards. So it's time to have a look at these and <laughs> see what they do. Uh, okay. Um... Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna take. What's that one again? Yeah, I'm gonna take this one. And get rid of that one, and then this one becomes an item, which goes under there. Okay. Anybody else leveling up? Uh, yeah, I did. I, so, I already leveled up. Arian's level not. five. Okay, right. So I think we're ready. Next round. Mm. Let's try to read some minds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, jokes on you. My mind is blank right now. Can I do that one? Yeah, I have to. I 
I'm in a huge pickle right now. Yeah, we both are. This is the card I'm playing. Okay. So, I'm playing a card I've not played before. Ooh, nice play. I'm playing my silver card. So, initiatives. I'm, I'm last by a long way. Um, Wasp is first on 13 with the Dazzling Dagger. Followed by Arian with, what the heck's this? <laughs> Rogue Wave. <laughs> oh, nice. You're all about moving people around, aren't you? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. There's a specific reason why I played this one, though. Right. Which I can go to when I'm resolving my card. And okay. this is where you see that level 5 is stronger, and stronger than level 2. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to attack Arian. Okay, so... So the attack is uh, how strong? going to be a three attack. Three attack. And so what I actually can do... Uh, Not normally, modified? Uh, normally, you can't really do this because their defense values are so weak, but the reason I position myself next to these minions so I could burn my silver card, they normally have like a very small defense value, yep. but um, that's enough to soak that one up because uh, I kind of want to keep my other cards. So let's just go through your defense. So the attack is three. Your defense mm -hmm. is modified by minus one because of this. Correct. But oh yeah, do, you're in do, range of my. Uh... But do you get a defense bonus because of your friends? Yeah, so uh, I mean, you can for for all purposes, you can say this and this guy cancel each other out. Then yep. I get one extra one extra defense. Uh, so I get exactly three. Uh, so you just needed the defense of two. Attack boost or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would have okay. I would have had to discard a different card. Yeah. But I, I had just enough. Which so is... defense two with the bonus of one is enough. Okay, and that's also why Raz pointed out the level difference because since yeah. he's under leveled right now, he doesn't have any attack buffs. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, next up is Arian with the Rogue Wave card. Me at eleven, and so even though this has a cool ability about pushing minions and everything like that, mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually going to target Raz with it for a seven uh, seven attack. So yeah. it's so normally five, five, but plus two because of your bonuses. Exactly. And 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 the reason why I attacked. Arian is because I cannot outrange his okay. attack yeah. right now. Nice. Uh, so there's a little bit of a mind I game. Done. <laughs> I knew mm -hmm. his gold was faster than mine because he yeah. had the initiative tie. Um, and we're both melee. So if I had played my gold and he had played his gold, he would have just moved one away and then I would have been stuck doing nothing. Yeah. Nice. So I had to hope that he didn't play his <laughs> green or something to run away. Yeah. Uh, so that was a little bit of a risky spot on my part uh, but, using my red turn one. But, but it worked. Also, I kind of had to play my gold right now because if he attacked with the gold, then I was also dead. Yeah. Because he was faster than me. So yeah. Cool. So you get um, three gold for that because Wasp yep. is level three. I get one gold because I'm your friend. The good news is Wasp is only worth one token right now. And it's, it's one yep. respawn token. Uh, okay, you do it. I'll do it. <laughs> so we unlock it, flip it over lock it again there you go right so next it is the pickpocket card on initiative three yeah this is not going the way i was hoping okay <laughs> now my special card is a little unusual um because i play it and I, it just says if i have no cards in the discard pile i can retrieve this card and the first time i played this i was like well what's the point of this and then it was explained to me and i think i sort of get it now <laughs> I'm yeah. basically delaying. Yeah, exactly. And 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 so you saw it with me when I got killed earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, going into turn four with no cards is awful. Yeah. You're you're like you're treading water. You're not able to move. You have yeah. no options. Brogan, if he gets that, if he's able to fire that once, he becomes crazy tank. It just yeah. just that one turn hold. Going turn two in with still having five cards is, yeah. is really pivotal. So there we go. So that's what that's what I've done. Uh, now, just for the people who are bearing with us, there is one thing I, I meant to mention at the end of the previous round. If you have a look at my player board here, you'll notice that at the bottom of it, there are four bars. This basically gives you an indication of how good that character is at the different things. So the left-hand bar is the attack value. You can see that Brogan, the destroyer, as, as the name suggests, is quite good at attacking. He's very, very good at defense. Um, this one, I think, is, is the third bar, the initiative values. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the hourglass. Yeah, yeah. that's an issue. So I'm, I'm a pretty slow character, and in terms of movement, not very good movement. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the other characters, but just to give you an idea, I'm just going to take a look at Wasp over here. 
Uh, let's rotate the camera around so you can see what, and you can see how the character is very different. So still quite a lot of attack, 50-50 on defense, high initiative values, and lots of movement. So that gives you, you know, if you, rather if you if you're deciding what character you want to play when you're first playing the game, rather than looking through all the cards, which won't mean anything to you, have a look at these bars, have a look at the pictures, and decide which one you want to play based on that. Okay, so. This matchup Next. is kind of um, brawlers versus skirmishers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, where are we and what is happening? Uh, so that's there. That's there. Uh, how are we doing in the minion battle? We're not doing well in the minion battle, are we? Yeah, we are one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. We are two down. We're two down. So we need to do something about that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna attack down. So right now, the most we can do really is is um, well, we have two teams on an attack down, so we might be able to stabilize. But, yeah, um, they're still in the. I mean, even if we lose this push, they're in the defensive position. So even yeah. if we kill one minion and stabilize it, it's on them to get in the zone and keep trying to get us out of it. Because I mean, one push and we win. Yeah. So we can kind of take our time a little bit more and, and mm -hmm. what we decide to do a lot of the times uh, on the offensive side you're kind of waiting for the defensive team to make a mistake and then you either go and kill a minion or you go in and kill a uh, an enemy teammate like yeah we have a lot of a lot of opportunity in here yeah right we're flipping over and what ryan is mentioning about their attack cards down remember you've got five different cards in your hand you've got a red one and a gold one they are the attack cards so as soon as you see that a player has played both their red and their gold cards that's it. They, they don't have any other attack cards, so you can use that to your advantage. You know that they're not going to be able to attack you. Um, yeah, right. So initiatives. We have 12 first, which is Wasp with Attract Fire. In the advanced game, there are also characters that actually run with one attack, but even they have replacements that kind of stand in for an attack card. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the more complex the character gets, sometimes like they lose options someplace and then gain a crazy amount of options somewhere else. So there's okay. a really cool trade-off for some of those single attack characters. Yeah. Okay, and the four characters that we're playing with today, are these the four easiest ones? Arguably, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, so they're definitely some of the lowest complexity characters. Right. Uh, th these are all uh, going to be, yeah, these are the, the record. The, there's, for a 3v3 game, there's, there's obviously there's even team recommendations for for team right. comp and like three on each side so okay. each i believe playing like arian and brogan in your starter game are going to be on a team and then a third character is added if you're doing a 3v3 gotcha and then wasp and tiger claw are going to be on a team so that's yeah, nice. these are these are some really good starter characters yeah that's good that being said uh there are some characters that people will not match like psychologically with yeah mm -hmm. even if it's an easy character like sometimes you just don't get it and it's kind yeah. of personality thing it's very interesting yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I remember Raz being really upset about a character for a really long time, <laughs> just trying to nail him game after game after game. And then I played him like once and destroyed everything so right. hard that it got nerfed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then Raz, on the other hand, he's really strong with like the fox and the mummy. And those are characters that I absolutely cannot play. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Wasp is going first with uh, Initiative 12 card. Yeah. So I have to be very careful now. Um... Wasp is also an example for that because I can't play Wasp very well. I mean, it's the same with um, <laughs> it's the same with you know, general board games. There are some board games where I play it for the first time and I win, and it feels relatively easy. Mm -hmm. And then, then I play it a few times, and I seem to just do well in it. And then I'll play other games of you know similar complexity, and I do terrible. And it's just the flow of the game suits my natural play style or not. And that can have a big impact on, you know, how well I do in the game. Yeah. Yeah, and like like on Des's point, one of the cool things about guards is it's like the core of the game doesn't change, but like all the characters are different. So sometimes yeah. it just takes me seeing someone else playing a character. Like I'll, I, I think I understand them, and then I I don't do that great with them, and then I see Raz or Des play them, and I'm like, okay, so that's. I, I mean, every character has multiple ways to play him, but like, yeah. I'd be like, okay, that's that's what I did wrong. I was yeah. 
I thought this character was more of a tank than they were. Clearly, I died three times when I played him. I wasn't playing him right. So yeah, that was the dog. Really, yeah, <laughs> that was the dog. <laughs> uh, we're all talking about the dog. When we, <laughs> he's one of the uh, one of the expansion characters. But yeah. okay, cool. Um, it's uh, so yeah. It's there's there's it's really cool seeing how different people interpret different characters. Yeah, uh, which is one of my favorite parts of playing this game. Yeah. We, all right. We right. So, I I wanted to go a bit further into the fray, mm -hmm. but because Arian is so menacing right now, <laughs> I need to stay put. Okay. Okay. So you're yeah. you're just respawning and you're not moving. Exactly. Interesting. Okay. Right. Who's next? It is. You are respawning though. Sorry. Are respawning? Yeah. Do you... do I have to? You, you have to. You, hold, you don't have to respawn. Yeah, you, you have to play the card. The card. Uh, you can use hold, and then you don't respawn, but you play the card. Oh yeah. Okay. So I will not respawn. Okay. For safety purposes. Okay. Yeah, that's the anti. That's the anti camping measure. Right. Yeah. So I'm on initiative five. Uh, your magical current is initiative six because of your modifiers. Oh yeah, it is. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is play it a little bit safe. I think, or at least try to. Um, and I'm going to. What movement do you got? I think I'm going to go ahead and teleport here. Mm -hmm. Nice play. And then it's me. So now I think this is the point where I'm going to move in. So I am going to go 1 2 to there with that card. Uh, that's turn Shadow two, Wolf, yeah. isn't it? Um, that was a so, great time for you to move in, Paul, because yeah. Des was popping a silver. <laughs> yeah. was, I think I think that was the perfect time to move in. So you're you're immune to things next turn, basically. You've like gone invisible or something. Yep. Yeah. Right. You next turn. Minions, units, whatever he wants to. Yeah. 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 Okay. I've chosen my card. I feel like I've been playing alone a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I didn't think the game had a solo variant, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I did, zone my, I did zone myself out badly. Mm. That was, I don't know if that was a good idea. Well, you can tell us at the end what your cunning plan was. I assume it was part of a cunning plan. All right. Oh, sorry, I got to play one. Uh, I'm taking a long time. It's just Tiger Claw. I mean, even if he uses his red to move, like that five movement, I'm like yeah. looking at all the spots that he can move to. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't like that spot. I don't like that spot. But I think I just got to go with my gut and do this. Okay. We're flipping. Let's flip it. Okay. So uh, that's initiative five. That's initiative 10. That's initiative 11. And I'm on 11 as well. Shall I go first? Uh, yeah, I'm cool with you going first. Okay, and I'm actually going to remember to do it this time. So I'm using this card <laughs> as an attack. I kill the minion, I get two gold, and then I move onto its space. Very so that nice. goes there, that goes there, and I'm going to have this two gold. ka -ching. Okay, next. Right. Aspiring then, Duelist. Uh, You're just using it to move? I guess, yeah, because it's a I defense am, card, isn't I, it? Yeah, I am. I'm just trying to see. Yeah. I can't block all of them. You always, you're, you, like, you're playing checkers when you're going against yeah. <laughs> Tiger Claw. And so I'm trying to look at all the spots. Uh, I actually think I'm just going to stay here. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So next is Instant. Tiger Claw. I know exactly what I do. So Tiger Claw has rushed in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and then Wasp. Are you going to stay in the throne room eating chips? Or are you going to come out to play? Oh, my God. Yeah, this is what <laughs> I'm going to do. I'm going to go here. Okay. Right. Turn four. 
Okay. Ryan's reaction felt a lot like my own. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't remember all the values because because Paul held uh, first turn. Uh, so I think that's why Raz moved where he did instead of going in. I'm right. not sure. Okay, and flip. Okay, so we have a third. We have a 14 over here with the blink strike. Uh, then we're going to have a 12. Then we're going to have an 11. Oh, followed God, by my three. eight. Yep. So Tiger Claw is first. So terrifying. God. Ouch! Ouch! Well, ouch! Old Paul. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think. What are you doing? Yeah. Blink okay. strike. So Tiger Claw is blink striking me. So let's do the attack. Your attack of two plus one because of your attack bonus is three. Uh, and I am at minus one to my defense. Which is balanced out by the other minion. Oh yeah, we should so it's basically it's three. I need a card of defense three. Uh, now, you thankfully... You need a card of defense two because you've got a shield upgrade. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it, it doesn't really matter because this is... Yeah, okay. Let, let's just play this one because it's normally two, but I've got a plus one because of my enchanted armor. So there we go. That goes there. Let's put all my money together. By the way, that's a six so. shield, right? You know? Oh, it's a six. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'll keep that then. You can do I'll, that. I'll play the three yeah. instead. There you go. That would have been a horrible misplay if you used that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, as long as I don't get attacked a second time this, this turn, then I'm okay. Uh, right. Who's next? I believe it is the Noble Blade on 12. And now I realize oh, sorry. No, 13. <laughs> oh, damn it, rest. Or darn it, rest. Sorry. Um, I'm going to. Uh, ah. <laughs> I'm going to move here. <laughs> okay. <Hey. laughs> so just go through it with me. Why are you not attacking the minion? Because Raz uh, is a jerk. And um, if, right. played, so if I wanted to attack that minion, uh, I already got hit once. Uh, I'd kill this. Uh, that would be fine. Yeah, but, but then you get this, the boomerang. Which is a perfect counter. Yeah, so right. I just I just get eviscerated, and it's a lot worse for me to die right now than Raz because our spawns all the way back here. So yeah, um, if we were if our minions were looking a little different, I might have done it. But yeah, right gotcha. now it's, we're in a tricky spot. Okay, I'll make yeah, that makes sense. You don't have any cards left in hand, so you couldn't defend yourself, so you would die. Oh, like Whereas position. yeah, going where you did, the boomerang can't hit you. Yep. Right. Okay, and now, speaking of the boomerang, it is the boomerang's turn. Yeah, and uh, I don't have any valid target right now no. for my boomerang, um, so I need to reposition. And I don't think I can block. So, this is me dying, this is me dying, this is me dying. <laughs> This is me dying, this is me dying, and this is me alive. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's no way around it. This is my position. Okay, okay. right. So, I've got my card. Now, Furious Charge... Um, yeah, I, I must move either two or three spaces, but I can move through tokens and minions. Correct. So my, basically, I can move to there and kill a minion, or I can move to there and kill that minion, or I could move to here and attack Tiger Claw. So let's have a look at Tiger Claw's no. cards. No, you can't. The, uh, the only option is not a Tiger Claw. Tiger Claw's not a minion. He's a hero or oh. a unit. So, yeah, I think uh, sorry. actually just made the same misread. So you can move through this minion. Okay, this, so... But yeah, when he please, says tokens please, and please. minions, tokens are not in this version of the game. Yeah, we're not playing... I don't think we have any characters that no. use tokens. Okay, so it's just no, minions that I can move through. counter or marker, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. But that's it. Okay, so yeah, I can't move through marker. other heroes. Correct. So, uh, the question is, do we want to kill this one, or do we want to kill that one? And I'm not allowed to ask you for advice, so I'm just going to move it around, and when you cough, that's where I'm going <laughs> to... 
I'm going to cover my webcam here that, real that, quick, so I can't say That's anything. how it works. I, I can't see the webcams anyway, so um, oh, okay. let's have a think about this. I'm just trying to think of setting up for the future. Um, and I think, I think I'm going to go there. No, no, no. No, I'm going to go there. Uh, and then we kill this one. So that one leaves play. I get another two gold. And that card goes to there. And that is the end of that round. So yep. we, we get our cards back. Terrifying situation now. I feel so bad for, for that misplay now. Yep. Okay, so all on you. On you. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. Right. I then, my fault. <laughs> the minions are fighting and they are even. It was a really bad idea just to try giving you that those two gold for the minion. I think we lost so much due to that. Yeah, yeah. so the minions are fighting each other, but they are three versus three, so there's no change there. And now we're going to do our leveling up. So I'm currently level five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's going to cost me uh, five gold. Is that right? One. Two, three, four. You're level five, five, then you need five to level up. It, it costs me five gold. So I level up. Yep. I'm now level six. And I'm going to get another tier three card. Now, I need to have a look at these. So while I doubt it will happen, if we do actually manage to turn this game around, it will be a pretty awesome stream. It would. Yeah. yeah there's, there's been plenty of times where I thought I was going to either win or lose a game of guards, and then something happened, and, and all my, like... Everything turned around. There's been so many like late game turnarounds where we've kind of, as part of playtesting, we have to kind of like do a post mortem and say like, okay, where mm. was the game really won? And then we'll break down like the last round and be like, oh, the team that lost actually, if they had played these cards in a swapped order, 100% won the game. And sometimes right. it's one team won by pushing, the other team could have won by kills. Sometimes it's it's flipped. So like, there's there's always something to do in guards, even if it feels very dire. There's, there's always typically a good thing you can do. It's just sometimes hard to find it. Paul actually witnessed that last game as well because yeah. it was like literally one decision that um, changed who won the game. And oh, sad wow. to say, that was also my misplay that we lost that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not having a good day. I'm not having a good guards day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So. Also, I need to say this because I always say it to every newcomer. Like... There's always a possibility of, of a turnaround yeah. in this game. Like, it might look like we're badly losing right now, but one good pick and it can turn the tides yeah. really yeah. quickly. Right, have Which we I all leveled up? It, you probably jinxed us and it won't happen. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> we're, we're all leveled up, we're all ready? On your, on your pad, Paul, don't, don't jinx it. That, that's so, the rule for guard. So yeah. you two are now both level four. So you're both tier two. Okay, we're all... Are we all still tier two? Yes, we are. Uh, yeah, I need one more. I, ca I can get one more tier three card. Yeah, yeah, same here. Right, okay, so let's have a look at the situation. And let's have a look at my cards. And let's see what we can do. So, but the good news is they can't win by killing us. Yet. Yet. The bad news yeah. is they can win by killing minions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And they're actually also in a pretty good position for that. Okay, card has been chosen. Oh no, actually, yeah. <sighs> we should... I'm not, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> I've made so many wrong calls now with this game. I don't know if anybody can see on the um, on the feed, but I'm uh, I'm sweating a little bit here. <laughs> this is <laughs> so am I. <laughs> My blood pressure has gone up a little bit. This game is always like so intense when it's yeah close to winning yeah. or losing. Yeah, I'm also amazed that you did two games today. Like after one game, I'm I'm just emotionally drained. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> well, cool. yeah. I mean, we'll we'll talk about it a bit afterwards. But there's the the there's, there's some things I want to tell you about my my personal feelings that I've had today with this game. So oh, okay, yeah. Okay, this here is, we go. This is where it shines. Okay, so let's look at the initiative values. We have um, Tiger Claw is on a 10, Wasp is on a 12, um, Arian is also on a 12, and I'm on 8. So it's Wasp first with 12 because you've got initiative. 
So we'll flip the initiative token over. Yep. Uh, and you get to do the magnetic shield. Uh, so a little distinction too. I mean, uh, like uh, the the token, and this matters for a couple characters specifically. It flips after yes. Raz does his turn. So yeah. like we're flipping it a little early, but it, he would resolve, and then we flip it. And then you flip, yeah. Yeah. Specifically for one character in the game, a really oh cool, right, okay. One of the one of the, the higher tier characters, it's it's uh that's very important when the token flips. Right. I have a question for Artie. Um, he could. Right now, he could uh, charge through the, the super minion, right? Yep. All right. So that means I'm going here. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the only thing Artie said on stream after the intro. Just, yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, and because it's the I cat. I mean, you're I doing mean, a great job on your own. I don't need oh, to. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and cat is going to be annoying as well and block this route. So rude. I know, you guys. Yeah, horrible. Now that I realize I can't jump through through with the heroes. Hmm. Well, um, uh, so my thing, sorry, I, I, I mean, it popped it, but it's not really applicable for this round. I should have gone. No. Uh, what's this face down card here? Is that is it the one for your next That's round? That's my next card. Oh, really right, know. okay. Uh, so it's me next. So yeah, I can't I can't do the attack. So I'm just going to use it for move three. But importantly, that's that red card gone. Yep. So where are we going to move? I think. Uh, I think I'm going to go here. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Next round. Um, Okay. Uh, I just need to have a look at these. These that is the part yeah. of guards where everyone gets really, really quiet. <laughs> yeah. It's even worse now that you have the face cams in because mm -hmm. at least otherwise you could just mute your microphone or something, but people can still see your expression. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Except for Paul, right? <laughs> yeah, I can't see anybody. I'm. I'm just. Yeah. I have my iPad here, but everybody's a bit small. Um, oh, that's not going to work, is it? Well, it might. No, it probably won't. Hmm. Yes. Do you need to do something right now? I think it's noise. important that we share, uh, you know? I think... We need to go huh. right? Okay, I've chosen. Yeah, we, uh, no way we, well, we're we going to mind yeah, though, Paul. We've been doing it the whole we, game, yeah, we got have, this. We, we know what's yeah, happening. Let me, oh no, uh, too late. They put yeah. a card, we can't say anything anymore. Mm. Right? Okay. Right. So initiatives. We have a 13 with the Dazzling Dagger. We have a 13 with the Noble Blade, which is going to go first because we have initiative. Uh, I'm on four, and then we have the Pickpocket on three. So Noble Blade first, and I won't flip the initiative token until after you've resolved the card. We're good. Okay. So I'm going to kill this. Yeah. So you get two coins, and then we flip the initiative token. All right. I'll let me take this back there. Okay, Dazzling Dagger. I'm going to kill this. Yep. And get gold as well. Uh, so then my card <laughs> takes effect. And I'm going to put that on as a shield. So every friendly minion within range two, I can protect this round. And then pickpocket. Sneaks in, steals some gold, runs away. How'd you get there? How did you get there? Wait, it's only it's only a two. Sorry, wait. Uh yep. I was here, You were on right? these yeah, no, you were here. Oh uh, there? Even Yeah. Okay, wait. Stop cheating, Des. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> Are you just using it as one movement? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think there was another option that would be healthy for me. Okay. Okay. Right. So, oh god, this is scary. This is scary. This is very scary. Are you gonna take it? I'm gonna try to. Okay. So, 
But um, um, keep in mind that Brogan can block for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he? Yeah. Oh, did he go for shield? I did. Oh, I went for my shield from. He's been on a shield for the whole game, I think. Oh, so, boy. Okay. You, I, I mean, the good news is, I think that they... No, he still has an attack. Oh, man! <laughs> Are we okay with killing Brogan? If no! What have I ever done to you? Uh, I don't think we can do anything right now. Well, we can force him out of his cards. But they still they still have two attacks. This is so horrible. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Can you afford to take the risk? That is the question. Could this be the move that turns the tide? I love that you played that blue card, by the way. That's like the greatest thing everyone has ever <laughs> I didn't realize you'd swap. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, the reason I swapped it is because in the first game we played this afternoon, um, I'd forgotten that there were two types of minions, melee and ranged, and I played the shield and it only protected melee and it caught me out so this time yeah. i've taken the upgrade that protects all of them <laughs> just so i don't get caught like, out that's one of the greatest things about guard there are plenty of cards like that like i mean you, you opted to keep brogan's charge yeah. but it's actually really good to sometimes swap between his charge and his range options yeah. because you're the enemy's not expecting it and so yeah. that was perfect example of that yeah right. okay so we can flip it Let's see if we can do anything. Here we go. Right, so initiative values. We have, I believe, 14. So Blink Strike is 14. Uh, then both of us two are on 11. And then we have Kinetic Repulse on 5. So Blink Strike first. Yeah. I think I don't have a choice. Blink okay, strike so you're, moving the there. Super. you're attacking it, which would kill it. But yeah, I am going to discard a card from my hand. To protect it. By the way, that card's already getting changed after the last game, if I heard correctly. I think Artie's going to change it, so we have to block for the minions. Oh, right, okay. Rather than it Instead just be just one card for... Card. All right. no, no, sure. but it's just okay. wording. I mean, the way it works is not changed. Uh, Paul, oh, okay. we yep. have an initiative tie. Uh, we do. Let me, let me read my card here real quick, um, because I think I'm okay going first. Just okay. to... Just to give some nice symmetry to the stream. Yeah, that's okay. fine. So you're doing Rogue Wave. Okay, before the attack, you it's a ranged attack. attack. Push every enemy minion adjacent to the target one space. And it's a you um, may. It's a may. Then it's a may. Okay, so I because I'm I'm not wanting. The first to part push. is a may. The second one is a must. Uh, is that an either or already? If that's the case, I'm going to have Paul go first. But like, if 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 it's a if it's a must, come again. Uh, the second part of Arian's attack, uh, the push. If it's, yes. If it's not mandatory, it's mandatory. mandatory. Okay, uh, Paul, I would like you to go first then. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I will go first now. Which which one am I going to hit? It probably doesn't matter. Oh no, I can only hit the little one. Yeah. So uh, we will use Onslaught and we will attack the little one. There you go. Okay. That's gone. And I get and two you, coins. And you move into its space. And I move into its space. GG. I shoot this minion. Yeah. GG. That's GG. I'm so, so sorry. Oh my god, what happened? <laughs> I was trying to get you the last kill, Paul, but if I had gone first, I would have pushed that heavy away from Exactly. You. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Just, maybe I should have set this one out and let someone play who hasn't played the, the <laughs> previous right. game. No, like no, 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 it's, it's all good. It, guys. Paul it's... did it perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was amazing play from both that of you. That was a yeah. misplay early on and um, yeah. Okay, you so. Kept us, you took us by the throat at that point, we couldn't yeah. get out of it anymore. So, first thing well, is, compared to the game that we played this afternoon, the game that we played this afternoon went all the way down to the wire. All, we were on basically the last wave, um, the re uh, the um, the respawn tokens, both teams were like one kill from the end. Uh, this one obviously ended early. It was it was two pushes. That was it. That was yeah. only one push actually. Yeah, well, like one two push. for the victory, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas as I say, the one we played this afternoon, it yeah. was one push, then a push back, 
then another push forward, then a push back. Um, so yeah, uh, games can go very differently. Yeah. So it's yeah. There were. I mean, we can. Do, I don't know how deep we want to go into the post mortem, but like a couple big things that I saw, like you blocking the fast travel as long as you did, especially yeah. after Tiger Claw went down there, that was fantastic. Yeah. I yeah. think you killing the heavy when you did, so I could get in. I mean, I know yeah. we still lost a minion, but that made it so that I could kill one and then keep moving in. And like, I don't think after that you blocked fast travel and the push happened. I don't think we ever lost momentum, which was no, we didn't, which was awesome. There were a yeah. couple points where it was really close. Like my was, mistake, was... my main mistake, I should have went there and prevent Arian from coming back into the fray. Yeah. That would have slowed down coming back yeah. and even allow us for more breathing room to get mm -hmm. into uh, yeah, for for the push yeah. to come back. Yeah. yeah. So Des, you're boomer, you're... Explain to us this this cutting plan of moving off to this southern zone. Um, as well, actually, what happened was I was so focused on getting um, getting wasp in the zone and taking a, uh, to take a minion because um, Arian had already taken one. Right. So we were like forced to bal uh, to forced to get the minion advantage again. So I played my green so I could block um, you from doing your red. Yeah. And. Which you then, then of course, didn't play, and at that point I realized that wherever I'm gonna, wherever I go, you're gonna kill me. Right. So I was hoping that I could bait you away by moving the other <laughs> way. Okay. And sadly, that did not turn out. That did not work out. No. No. I was right. So... I wanted to sacrifice myself for um, the <laughs> beach cut, um, beach battle. Yeah. So the the story that I was going to tell you. Uh, bearing in mind I've only learned how to play this game earlier today. There is another game that I've been playing quite a lot of in the last few months and I'm not going to say what name it is because that would be unfair and arty because we're promoting this game. But that other game is also a very low look based tactical game um, that's basically a, a ver very similar to tower defense games. And the feeling that I have when I'm playing that game is that I am on the edge of my seat, the tension levels go up, the adrenaline goes up, the nervousness goes up because Every single move you make in that game can make or break the game. And I've had exactly the same feeling when playing this game. Guaranteed, not in my learning game this afternoon, because that was just, you know, three hours of me learning what was going on. But in the game tonight, I felt a little bit more in control of my decisions. Mm -hmm. But the things that you're talking about here is, oh, I, I should have moved there, because if I'd have done that, that would have blocked this. This game is extremely tactical. And you're right, just, just a little move here or a little move there or slightly yeah. delaying by one turn can absolutely swing it and because it's a low look game or a no look game those decisions are down to the players mm -hmm. yeah paul, paul um i remember um, when we were playing the practice game you commented that you wouldn't feel comfortable you would only feel comfortable playing the game with um like a list of all card options mm -hmm. how do you feel after playing this game now um i'm <sighs> So I went into this game knowing that I, I roughly knew what your characters did, roughly, but if I was playing this game, you know, on, on a slightly more competitive level, um, yeah, I would probably want to know a little bit more about what your cards did specifically. But for the purpose of the stream tonight, it, it was fine. I knew roughly what your characters did, um, but not exactly. Yeah. So one thing that I really like about guards, and it's kind of just the more you play it, uh, the kind of the more tiers of understanding you have. Like the mm -hmm. first couple games, it's really about like learning the flow of the game, and yeah. once you got that down, it's about learning your character. I mean, in the second game already, we saw fast travel be using a lot more offensively, which in a lot of first games, people only really see to use it to get into the fray again once they've died. Yeah. Uh, so seeing it used offensively was cool. But then there's another tier. I'm, I won't get super into like the all the different tricks to guards but like um even if you don't know what cards do it's almost more important to know the card order so when we were talking about initiatives this isn't the hard and fast rule but like a good thing to know at the start is your gold's typically going to be your fastest card your your yep. blue's going to be your second fastest sometimes it swaps with your green but it's it's not as long as you know one card's under gold and then you have your so you have your gold blue your red and then your green yeah. And then your silver kind of fluctuates, but it's also sometimes one of your more conditional cards. So even if you don't know what characters can do, if you see like, okay, their gold and their blue is out, I still have my gold. Whatever they do, I might, I, I think I can get away from it. Yeah. So, so even learning that, yeah. that's kind of even bigger than learning every single character, or else yeah. your brain would just explode. Like, yeah. I mean, we've been playing a year and a half. 
my brain, like, I, I have a finite <laughs> amount of characters that I can remember, and I think it's five. So then as soon as someone plays one of those not five characters, I'm like, like okay, uh, what, does, what did they do? But yeah. just knowing that initiative trick really gets you super far in the game. So like, yep. that's yeah, a yeah. really good thing to grasp. Yeah, and that's what, I did, that's what I did today. I was basically looking at my cards, and then I looked over at the opponents, and I went, right, they haven't yet played their gold card. That means I know yeah. if they do, they're going to be going on initiative 12, 13, 14. It, it didn't matter the fact that I didn't know the card was an 11 or a 12. I just knew that they were going to be going before me. Yeah. 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 Having that flow chart of have they played their fastest cards? Have they played their attack cards? Like, yeah. that's, that's really good to like. And, and then after a while, like, if you look at a character's gold and their silver, that kind of sums up a lot of the character's gimmick. Those are two like very staple cards. So yeah. like if you see that like like um, like Wasp is all about her gold cancels a skill and yep. then her silver is about locking you in like that Thunderdome or pushing you out. You're like okay, so she's all about shutting people down. Like she has a lot of a lot of manipulative stuff. So like, and and her her other cards kind of support that. So th that kind of gives you an entryway into like what the characters do and stuff. So yeah, those are those are some tricks to not get as overwhelmed. Even though guards, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on even with two against two. It's, it's yeah, like a lot of. A lot that's of kind of the. That's where the fun lies, because you know, at the first, uh, at the start of the game, when I played my kinetic barrier and that was cancelled by spell shield. Yeah. Like, person, I totally forgot that spell shield was a thing. Like, right. And it's one of those few cards that doesn't go into my memory. Like, Aryan yeah. for me is this and is this. Yeah. Right. Out of this, like, there's just too much information, and when you and when you fumble because of this lack of memory. I mean, this is where the fun appears. Right. Like, it's part of the game. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, I forgot you could do that. Yeah. yeah. Now, and then the for flip the... side is go like... On. Oh, good. Oh, sorry. No, no, go on. Go on. Oh, so, and, and I was going to say the flip side of that is like um, the communication rules, I think, are strict on purpose, like only talking open before the cards play. Yeah. Because then we flip the cards and then I saw you do something and I had to keep a poker face, but it was like <laughs> the exact thing that I needed you to do. Right. Okay. Like, those are like, those are such good yeah. guards moments because it's like, oh, we, we had that mind meld. We didn't even have to talk about it before playing. And it was actually better that we didn't. Because yeah. then yeah. like Raz and Dez have to have to spend the bandwidth trying to think about that combo. Yeah. So there's some really like those moments are like so so cool. Even if you lose the game, if you get a couple of those moments, it's yeah. really really cool. Yeah. Now I'd like to say that that was due to my natural skill and ability as a player, but every every one of the really really good moves that I made tonight was probably by accident. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that shield at the end though. That shield yeah. at the end was perfect. No, the, the like shield that. at the end. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not giving myself in any credit. A couple of the moves that I made were planned, and I, I had thought about what I wanted to do, but there was at least three times in the game where you went, oh, brilliant, that's absolutely fantastic, that's a brilliant move, and I went, sure, whatever, and, <laughs> and I kind of just went, um, I'm going to go here, because because I haven't played the game as many times as you have, I wasn't able to see the full impact of the decision that I was making, so thank you for explaining, because that, that showed me and the people watching on the stream that, you know, as I mentioned earlier on, those tactical decisions you make can have a big impact on the game. Yeah. Actually, one of the things I really like about the way, and I, I, he's listening, that's why I feel bad saying this publicly, but one of the things I really like about Artie's way of designing games is that he has a talent for making days that are really simple to learn and get deeper and deeper and deeper with each play. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know what to expect. Artie had sent me the rule book uh, a couple of weeks ago and because I knew this afternoon's game, we, we basically did a private game this afternoon, which didn't go out on the internet, uh, where they were going to teach me how to play. So I thought, right, I don't need to read the rule book because um, they're going to teach me how to play. But I went into it this afternoon thinking, oh, this is going to be a super complicated game and it's going to take me ages to learn. And then we started playing it and I was like, what? And, and you're right, this game is, the core rules are simple, but the complexity comes in the way that you play your character and the decisions that you make in the game. Uh, and it's what? It's a five minute teach for this game, I think? Yeah, well, um, there are 15. Some, yeah. Pieces, but yeah. Like, okay. a, a, like a really good recommend. I think it's in the rule book. The recommendation is to do like kind of like the, the intro that you did. You don't. Yeah. And then play play for. Um, I can't. One of you guys might want to chime one in. Push. Like, one push. One push. Yeah. And then reset. So then everyone like everyone gets a little bit of a feel for all the characters. They yep. get a feel for the game flow. 
and then you can get back into it. And that, that way it can be like a five, 10 minute teach. You get in it, you answer any rules questions. There might be some weird interactions that come up between the cards. So you can check an FAQ or something like that. And yeah. then and then you play the full game, and yeah. then, uh, which is what we just did. So yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's going to be one of the recommendations. In the yeah, I, I definitely think if you do get this game, you should not do what we did tonight as your first game. You should, <laughs> yeah. you should just, you should just pick a character based on, you know, the nicest artwork for you or whatever. Play it effectively. Just play random cards. Just, just do stuff. Play the cards. See what happens. Do it until you've had the first push, and then go right. Okay, reset. Then play the intro game, which is something like three pushes or something like that. Then put that away, and then swap characters. And yeah. this is what Artie yeah. said to me earlier on. Don't don't play your... So f forget the one push learning game, which is effectively play randomly to see what happens. Your first full short game, after you've played that, do another short game, but switch characters. Because then you'll be like, oh, okay, so Brogan, yeah, I just played you. I know what you can do now. And that will show that aspect of the game, the fact that you know the other character. Now, yeah, one thing we didn't had... see tonight is we didn't see the ultimate cards. If the game had gone on a bit longer and we'd have got a bit more gold, we would have leveled up to the highest level possible, which is level seven. When you do that, you get this, you get your purple card, which is an ultimate card. It doesn't go in your hand. It actually sits to the left of your player board there. And this will bring the game to a close relatively soon because these ultimate cards are pretty powerful. Um, and they are all unique again. Each character has their own ultimate card. How many times from your experience playing the game, guys, does the ultimate card come out? Uh, one about between every, I'd say six or eight games, roughly. Yeah, they don't come out a lot. Uh, okay, but that means that when they do, everyone gets really, really scared or excited, right. depending on what team well, you're on. Usually, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the saddest games are always those where you unlock your ultimate and then the game ex ends the next round before you <laughs> right, can use okay. it, and that happens yeah. so often. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's so. kind of a, 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 one of the big differences between like traditional computer video games, mobiles. Like when like reaching the ultimate is kind of a landmark of the game, whereas yep. in this game, it's it's more like if you if you reach the ultimate, then it means it's almost game over. Right. Because you're too powerful to stop. So yeah. these abilities are kind of they are crazy. Like they're super powerful. So and they're kind of made to to speed up the game as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I also said, uh, said that in the learning game that the ultimates are basically um, the designer telling the players to finally. Wrap yeah, it up yeah, yeah. And end the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I've played a lot of CCGs in the past, and the CCGs. Once you get the cards that cost like seven, eight, nine, ten mana to play, that's basically saying, "Look, the game's gone on long enough. Just <laughs> here's a couple yeah, of I cards." This is... yeah. So another thing that I wanted to say before the end of the stream is that the computer games that this board game is based on, I don't like. Okay, I'm not a big fan of those games. A couple of reasons. Um, the main one being the, the, the times that I've tried them, I found that they were very much on reactions. So I'd be focusing on one lane and I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm doing this and I'm moving me things around. And then suddenly I've lost the other two lanes. I'm not able to, to multitask to that extent. And I've tried a couple of them. Uh, Dota was mentioned, League of Legends was mentioned. And because they're super popular and everybody plays them, I thought, well, I've got to try them to see what they're like. And went off both of them just in a, a, a couple of hours of playing. How do you three feel about those computer games? Do you like those computer games? Um, I um, I bought Guards 1 specifically because, well, I felt too old to actually play <laughs> League of Legends anymore. I just didn't okay. have the reflexes and I couldn't match players that were like half my age. Right. And um, what uh, another side effect, which is really weird, is that um, for everyone who's used to MOBAs, um, and can um, and have Discord come in the Discord, say hi. This is seeing that those games have like this huge reputation for being extremely toxic and hate-filled. Guards is the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm also. I, I really love mobas. I really yep. love team play. Actually, this is yeah. what drives me in mobas in video games yeah. in general. Uh, a bit like Des. For me, it's it's uh, too stressful now to play these games. Like right. I watch pro plays, but 
I'm not playing so much. So Guards of Atlantis really has the same... Like, the depth is just crazy. It's incredible. One of the favorite things about this game, this game for me is... Uh, like, you can pick one character and you can you can tell yourself, like, this is the character I'm going to master, you know? Right. And it's kind of what happened with the, the character that Des mentioned before. Like, I didn't understand that character yep. at all, but I really wanted him to work. <laughs> so I just played, 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 like, five, six games with it. Yep. And that felt, even though I was a bit sour sometimes, that really felt rewarding to okay. really get into it and try to get it to work. And it's there's a few, only a few games that do that, really. Right. And what about you, Ryan? Do you play any of those computer games? Oh, yeah. I used to be, like, super into League of Legends and, like, Heroes right. of the Storm. I didn't play Dota as much, but um, my... So, apart from everything that everyone else has already said, like, I think the reason that I, I gravitate to this game so much is, like, there's, there's like, two really big... Well, the team thing is, is my favorite part. Like, yeah. I really... Like I said, like, my big thing is about the fugue state with your teammates and, like, yeah. really gelling with people. I think that's so cool. But also in, like, League of Legends, I, like when I'm looking at item builds for characters and stuff, and it's like 0.15% cooldown <laughs> reduction and everything like that with your items and all that stuff, when you look at the meta for high-level players, yeah. you're like, here's the, you know, here's the gems you need socketed and you need to spend this currency on it. Like, this one, it is plus one initiative, plus yeah. one movement, plus one attack. And, and, and you saw in that game, sometimes, like, everything was within one. Like, sometimes yeah. it was one initiative between someone going first that absolutely yeah. needed to go first or... One, one defense. Just that one extra to get that kill on the yeah. wasp early on. And so, like, that's very easy for me to understand. And because I can understand it, I realize, like, how pivotal all those decisions are. Yeah. Um, which, uh, so, I, I, I really like that element about it, is that um, it's a lot easier for me to understand. And then all of my micro decisions in the game feel that much more important because I understand the ramifications of what they have. I mean, yeah. sometimes you make the wrong decision and then you're like, oh God, what have I done? Like it, it works the other side. Yeah. Uh, it, it works just the same on the other side, but that's a big part of it for me is just is just like being able to understand the importance of all of those micro decisions. Yeah, it's interesting because I've never thought about it like that myself, but now that you've explained it in those terms, absolutely agree. If in a computer mm -hmm. game, I, I tick a certain box and it says, you know, 0.2% increase on whatever, I'm like, whatever. But in this game, you see plus one attack or whatever, and you can you actually straight away you understand what that is. So yeah. now that I've asked you what you think about these these games, obviously you've all played these type of computer games before, and you obviously enjoy this game. I don't enjoy those computer games. Mm -hmm. So the question is, did I enjoy this game? Now, to be fair, this is a sponsored stream, so I shouldn't really give my personal opinion on the game. So I'm not going to. But Hopefully, because I, I can't. It, it's not professional of me to sort of say, oh, this game's fantastic, go out and buy it when the publisher has actually sponsored this video. But hopefully, you saw how much I was enjoying it from the game. So if you're watching this stream and you think, oh, I don't like League of Legends, I don't like, I don't like those computer games, will I enjoy this board game? I think you should look at it. I think you should definitely look at it and think, okay, I don't like those style of computer games, but this one might be for me. On team play, I absolutely love team playing games, okay? So recently there has been, uh, my, my favorite way to play Cloudspire is 2v2. I just think that's awesome, the way that you're working with somebody else against another team. Um, Cerebria is another game, which is a 2v2 game that I played, uh, which I think is really good. And even if I go back to some older board games where there is like, it's up to four players, and there's a team version where you can do 2v2. That was always my favourite variant of playing the game. So I've always got... Um, personally, I'm a big team game fan. I know a lot of people aren't that hot on team games. And I know, generally speaking, in the board game world, they're not that popular compared to other games. But personally, I really like team games. So I'm glad I'm not on my own there. Right, Artie, do you want to jump back into the conversation? If he's still with us. Yeah, I'm here. How did how did that go? How did you how do you feel about that? Uh, well, I'm blushing after all the praise. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed the game. Uh, Good. I mean, some of the decisions. I think you're selling yourself short, to be honest. Like with some of those moves. Okay. Uh, you might say that you didn't plan this, but I, I personally I don't believe you. I think it was right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Uh, yeah, I, I hope that uh, whoever was watching the video kind of managed to get an idea of how the game is played and uh, what's the uh, advantages and um, disadvantages of the game and if the game is for you or not. Yeah. Uh, I'd like 
thanks uh, to thank everyone who was playing. Uh, I, I mean, myself, I enjoyed a lot watching you play. And I hope that if you feel like the game is for you, you will support us on Kickstarter when we eventually launch. Yeah, so that's April 28th, so 20 days from now. Um, keep an eye on the Wolf Designer social media pages for when it's going live. I will also post a link to it uh, when it goes live as well, and I'll, I'll post a link in in the show notes of this video if you are watching this. But yeah, it's going live on April 28th. And as I say, I'm not here to go and tell you to buy the game. I'm just here to show you what it's like so you can make your own decision about um, uh, about it based on how it plays. Um, and that's everything. So yeah, I think we're done for this evening. Thank you very much to everybody who was watching on YouTube and Twitch. Again, thank you to everybody who's watching this afterwards. Thank you to everybody for joining in with the chat. Sorry, I wasn't able to respond to the chat, but Artie was, I think, responding to people's questions in there. And we're done. Now, earlier on, you said, how can I play two games of this and still be sane? <laughs> <laughs> I need to lie down now because that, that was... I was on the edge of my seat a couple of times in that game because I could, I could smell victory, but I was also fully aware that the plans might just go completely <laughs> awry and, and fall apart. So, yeah. We were kind of hoping for this, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so when we were hoping for this place so we could get back in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Didn't happen. That was really didn't happen. from you guys. Didn't but happen. Last 10 minutes, I'm like, I can't say anything because anything I say could just make it not happen. I so know. I just have to be silent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Artie, for asking me to make this video. Thank you very much to uh, Ryan, Raz, and Des for joining me in the stream. And, uh, yeah, I wish you success. Are you going to carry on playtesting the game for the next? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And to but be honest, if, if I had more time on my hand, I would I would definitely be up for, for another game of this at some point. I'll see how my calendar's looking for the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, so but yeah. Welcome. You're welcome, man. I'll We're talk to you. Uh, games. I'll talk to you on Discord then. Right. Yeah. Thanks very much, everybody. I will see you next time. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Yeah, have a good one. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.